This is On Brand, a podcast where we discuss the ideas and antics of one Russell Brand. I'm Al Worth, and each week I go through an episode of Brand Show with my co-host, Lauren B. That's me, Lauren B. And I don't know what we're going to watch today and listen to today, but I know it's usually not great. Yeah, it's almost invariably bad, which is why we do the good thing before the bad thing. Lauren, what is your good thing before the bad thing this week? Oh, it is the Libby app. And I don't know if y'all have um, oh. a, a, a something comparable in the UK or anywhere else, but in the US, uh, the Libby app connects to your local library and uses your library card to... Mm. Um, for like audiobooks and ebooks, and also magazines and stuff. There's also Hoopla and Canopy, and I think Overdrive was the older app. But there's apps out there that use your library card, and um, hmm. I uh, so rather than having like an Audible or whatever, you know, an a, a account, um, yeah. it's entirely free. Um, it's not free. Our taxes pay for it. And I think it's a great thing that our taxes pay for. So the more people that are involved sure. and you don't even have to go to the library. Usually it depends on the system, but you don't have to go to the library to do it. Also, obviously we're not sponsored. It's the library, but like this is not <laughs> SponCon. I just love it. Um, no, I, I was going to say, I, I think if if um, like libraries, we would endorse as as a podcast, we endorse libraries. If, absolutely. Would I accept a sponsorship <laughs> of any kind? Hell That's yeah. one I fucking would. Yeah. Yes. I don't know how that would work necessarily. I don't get. Anyway, I don't think it would. But be great. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's fucking killer. And uh, so you know, like you know, Audible, you can kind of you know, you buy the thing, you're not renting yep. it. So, um, I do have to wait longer for you mm -hmm. know a very popular book. Um, but also if you have people on the internet, ju not just in person at the library buildings requesting mm -hmm. and engaging with the library system, then they're more likely to have more books and have more resources. And so yeah. I encourage literally everyone, if you don't have a library card, you usually don't have to show up. They will just issue a uh, number online that you can use. Um, mm. Libby, go get it. And so the <laughs> what's fun <laughs> is... Um, I you have, basically you have to like wait in a queue and you and you have like a hold if it's a very popular book and you're kind of like in line waiting to borrow it. Mm -hmm. And I'm specifically I'm talking about the Libby app, but I'm really excited to read um this book Chaos that Mike read, I guess maybe two years ago. And mm. it's Tom something. What's his name? taking me tom to something what's his name tom, the author it's of gonna chaos. happen it's close tom o'neill I, I had it tom i didn't have to look at it i could have just said it it just he, it sounded like a um a newscaster not an author but that's me <sighs> that's my bias coming through but um and i was like there can't be right it was right um a little pink behind the curtain as to what goes through my head whenever we're recording that's fun uh but yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, and i just started it and it's all about like the um manson case and the cia and oh, okay. and and so mike just finished this book the devil's chessboard which is all about alan dulles and the cia um mm. and so i'm fucking stoked to listen read this book um because i mean I, mike has never like run into a room and said okay stop what you're doing you have to hear this thing I just read. And then reading me bits of it, he's never been more excited about a crazy book than this book. And so now I get to actually imbibe the whole thing. Nice. Um, but yeah, you have to wait kind of a long time for the holds mm. on this app. And so mm -hmm. it seems like, um, it seems bad, I think, if you're used to having something instantly available kind of all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's a little bit like a present when it shows up every time. Yeah, and it's like exciting. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, this thing just came up and it was like, yes, cool. It was like getting a present or a prize. Yeah, right. And and you can um, um, you can always listen to something else in the meantime, right? You know, that's that's we've established awesome. I do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Quite a few so, things. Yeah. So that's cool. But also, I'm afraid that if I really start picking up on these reading habits of like CIA espionage, uh, mm -hmm. government secrets, we mm -hmm. will be impossible to talk to. 
in public. <laughs> more so Ever. than you are already. More, which already, <laughs> mm, it's, there's, a yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. there's a line. There's a line, a little mm-hmm. asterisk. Um, so yeah, this may make us completely insufferable to the public, but it's so interesting and I want to know. Uh, uh, that's um, That's a really nice thing that mm. I also encourage anyone out there to Libby app. It's the fucking best. And mm. libraries in general are spectacular. And I'm, whatever, I'm sure there's some, I mean, maybe it's available outside of the US. I don't know, but. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know. I was just going to say, I, I have no idea. I, I have, I have always gone physically to the library. So, right. so I don't know. I Probably there, there's, there's gotta be something here um, that that's comparable. I would think. Um, I don't know. I would say yeah, it might be the same thing. Check it out, or or the library itself is made a proprietary. Mm, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's a bunch of like music ones too. I don't know. I yeah, yeah. I try to avail myself all kinds of shit. Everyone, go to your local library. They're awesome. Well, but even specifically like apps that are that have been putting out. I still get emails, and I looked into a thing like ten years ago. Uh, you mm-hmm, know, like through mm-hmm. the St. Louis Public Library. So that was like, mm-hmm. there's there's still their own kind of dedicated services, which I think is really cool. Everybody should check them out immediately, especially the way the libraries are being treated in yes. America yes. right now is fucking rough. So, and in the UK. And in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, yeah. I, um, right. So, yeah. What's your good thing? Well, um, kind of, kind of related to yours, actually, um, but but in a different sense. Um, so bear with me on this. So the, this weekend, um, uh, experienced a power cut in in just my house, um, and um, that was yeah, kind of like half two in the afternoon until the following morning, um, <laughs> which that's not stressful at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not stressful at all, especially when like I've got a show to be doing, for instance. Um, you know, I've I've got got things got things to be happening and 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 a child to to be, you know, entertaining and all of this who is like, why is the telly not working? What yeah. what what the fuck is this? Um, you know, she she was yeah, she was she was not particularly pleased with that situation. And and one one thing that became kind of um Oh no! Very, very obvious to me was how fucking quickly we all go back to the 1800s um, w- w- without any, uh, without any heating um, and without any electricity. Uh, it's like, a thing that gas. we could stand yeah. to be reminded of a little more. Yes, often. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I had gas, so I was able to like you know fill a little hot water bottle for April and all that. And, you know, I was like, okay, you're you're not going to freeze to death overnight, right. good. Um, you know, and and. Uh, Thankfully, the house wasn't like ridiculously cold yet. I was like, okay, yeah. that's fine. Um, and she slept in with me anyway, you know, body warmth and all that. Penguin, um, penguin style, yeah, has to. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, but yeah, it was like it was like eleven o'clock at night before this uh, fucking landlord called a fucking gas a, a boiler engineer for some inexplicable reason. I was like, I need an electrician. Okay, I'll call this guy. That's not hmm. guy. Literally showed up and was like. Yeah, it's not this. Bye. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, th- like I said, thank you. Um, <laughs> and and by that point, it was too late to call anyone else. So I was like, ah, fuck it. Um, so you know, sort the dogs out and everything. And I was like, normally I I do something to wind down at this time to try and like you know and 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 I was I was like, well. My phone's off because I'm trying to conserve phone battery for a start. Yeah. Nothing else. Not because you know, I didn't know how long this was going to last. Right. Um. N- nothing else was was feasible. My my Kindle was dead, and that's normally where I do all of my reading. Um. And so what I what I had to do was was light a little candle on my bedside table and get a physical book and and read that like I was in the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> um at, at at a time that that was fairly early for me. Um I was like, all right, fuck it. And I I, I, I had a little bit of whiskey and I sat there and I started reading uh the Witcher books um because I've had those sat there for ages and I was like, mm. Yeah, go on, let's let's give those a look. Um terrific, really enjoying so far. But yeah, nice. my good thing before the bad thing specifically, I think, is is reading a physical book. Just just having having that tactile thing. It's been a while. It's yeah. been a while. Um, you know, could have done without the candlelight, to be honest. But the physical book that was great. That was it doesn't yeah, work 
super good. No, <laughs> and it's no, a little hot, bit little dangerous. A little hot, a little dangerous near paper. Uh, a little flickery, you know, not great for the eyes. But um, but hey, we got that. We yeah, got that. Yeah. Um, I miss so. it. I get it. Like I I'm mm, I just spent mm. all this time touting this app, but also like I. I mean, I, yeah, I, I miss I miss the reading thing because, uh, you know, there's books that I've been able to absorb very well. Um, and, you know, I obviously I listen to a lot of content. The audiobooks yeah. are still just read versions of books, not podcasts. So the the yeah. way that the content is put together is different. And they and you can remember characters names a lot more mm -hmm. easily when you read them and you see the shape the word makes and all yeah, that. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. That's the one thing different... that I'm like, oh, it's harder mm. to keep that kind of stuff, um, to keep track of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, your brain processes it differently, doesn't it? You know, it's, it's um, you know, uh, while while listening to a book is still reading a book, in my view, I, I, I do think, yeah, it can be harder to kind of keep everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And also the audiobook reader being, uh, mm, maybe getting a little zealous about differentiating the way people talk to help oh, you yeah. hear could make you just <laughs> cringe to death. And yeah, so yeah, I've had yeah. that experience where I'm like, okay, I know who's talking, but my stomach hurts listening to this. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. When, 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 when you try, when you're listening to a 55 year old man trying to do the voice of a 14 year old girl, it's like, no, nah, please, please, no, just, just, just read it. Don't do that. Just, just read it. Read it like you, and just say, even just say beforehand, this is blah 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 talking. That's better. That's better yeah. than the other option. Yeah. Thank you. Uh <laughs> and with historical nonfiction, it can get very spicy and oh awful. yeah oh oh boy that's what oh, i'm saying dear. That's what I'm saying. oh dear okay okay <laughs> you're like oh wow. no oh no <laughs> this is how we've Please decided stop. to handle this oh Please no <laughs> oh dear <laughs> this was a choice this yeah. was a choice <laughs> I, I would i don't know i don't know how else i would necessarily have handled this <sighs> you know what i'm glad that's yeah, not my job yeah. I'm yeah, so excited 100%, that hundred percent. That's it. That, that's it. That's the moment of gratitude. Like, well, at least I don't have to do that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I hope oh, the guy oh, got paid. Probably not enough. I imagine. I know the rates for that kind of work because yeah, I've done some of yeah, it. Yeah, and yeah, boy, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. Um, <laughs> let's move on from there. Okay. So <laughs> normally uh, we'd thank some new patrons here, but there are no new patrons. No new patrons. But hey, that's okay. Um, there are plenty of ways to support us that uh, just cost a moment of your time, like leaving us a review on Spotify or iTunes or wherever, um, or telling a friend who you think might like us. Um, you know that'd be great. Um, you know, spread the word. Uh, each one, teach one, all that good stuff. So yeah. Yeah, tell tell everyone you know tell your grandma um but um yeah if if anyone wants to support us and what we do uh become an awakening wonder join the invisible hand or donate on an elevated tier head to patreon.com slash on brand and you will have our eternal gratitude mm -hmm. it is this which allows us to be editorially independent and ad free uh, as a patron you will also get a shout out on the show and access to our patron only show off brand where we usually talk about pretty much anything but russell brand except this week we discussed the queerness of it all and our own experiences in queer spaces etc as well as expanding on where we disagreed on russell's stance on the lgbtq plus community in last week's episode um i thought it was a really interesting conversation um i hope our patrons do too go check it, it was out, my everybody. idea so i'm it was your biased. idea that's exactly well, yeah, well, i feel we, like i need we, to disclose <laughs> well i <laughs> also think it's great that so i just there we expressed go. Um, but yeah, yeah, if you go to Patreon, go to Patreon dot uh, com slash off brand. There's a whole two hour conversation about just that. Um, and please note that while you can listen to our audio version anywhere you can find podcasts, you can also watch us on YouTube or if you listen to the Spotify app, the video should come up there too. Now then, uh, this last week was a total fucking snooze, like just absolute desert for any content worth discussing um and it's just rehashing old bullshit the entire week and as it happened personal circumstances in my life like living in the 1800s briefly meant pushing the cutting of clips back a ways because you know they didn't have laptops back then um so what we have is from monday this week um and it's a full show without an interview either uh so 
got a lot of rustle to get to. Um, so let's let him introduce the show and some of what we'll be discussing today. Hello there, you Awakened Wonders. Thanks so much for joining me on Stay Free with Russell Brand today as geopolitics, global politics and domestic politics shift. The tectonic plates are moving. Let us know in the comments and chat if you think that Ron DeSantis is pulling out interesting image is the oh, end of the kind dude. of trajectory <laughs> of reclamation that nikki haley represents because he's come out ain't he ron and said it's trump whereas see when vivek predicted that ron DeSantis would run as vp with nikki haley do you remember that video that was that was an interesting moment well ron DeSantis has pulled out trump has given a <clears throat> extraordinary speech on the subject. Meanwhile, Joe Biden, what did we see Joe Biden do? Get mix up Ukraine and Congress. That's what we saw him do. We've got some brilliant reporting from inside Davos, where of course, in essence, the significant narratives play out. Globalism, of course, <laughs> okay. being a more powerful mm -hmm. force in the politics in your country than anything you may be purportedly domestically offering. Right, whoever you vote for, you might end up with a globalist run in your country. Ooh. And I'm looking at the rumble chat and I'm seeing a lot of people talking about, yeah, Trudeau, globalism. Hello, Dan's Killer 420. Hello, Delinda Street. Hello, William Coburn. Hello, Carl Rhino and the nerd far away. We've got a problem with uh, locals today. So we're streaming exclusively exclusively on Rumble. The first 20 minutes will be up on YouTube. Ah, oh, the Locals <laughs> channel is down again. Yeah, you know, this is like the fourth or fifth time in about six weeks that this has been a problem for them. Like, we're, we're, the Rumble stream always works perfectly, um, but their they're Locals one, they're, they're always like, it's not working. We've just got to do it to Rumble. <laughs> um, I so mean, like, from like the what I looked into as far as the rumble, you know, like rumble funding and where they're trying to go with it. I bet they have mm -hmm. a lot of resources if they want to be like the Probably cloud server for yeah. yeah, the cloud server for like Nazis. <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> they exactly. have a lot that's, more that's... uh more ability to address these problems. And they know they're making yeah. very fucking big promises. Really like it, mm -hmm. For Rumble, all they have to have is like a stable platform and they will yeah. leave like, you know, Telegram and Gab and Truth, so like all other stuff is just going to disintegrate because it. Yeah, the time, yeah. You know? Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. They just need something that doesn't fall apart, um, you know, which, hey, I mean, clearly it's doing better than Locals is, um, which does beg the question why the fuck I would pay for a local subscription, um, you know. But That's what if, I thought. Mm -hmm. um, it, Russell does give us a different reason a little bit later on, so we'll put a we'll put a pin in that for now. Um, but uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> well, yeah. Anyway, anyway, of course, uh, today we'll be discussing dropout DeSantis, um, the World oh, I called Economic it? Forum. Did I call it? <laughs> I one hundred percent called it. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah, you did. Yeah. You did. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We'll yep. be discussing the World Economic Forum meeting at Davos, albeit briefly. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, mm. as is seemingly unavoidable with Russell's show, things will later take a dark turn. Um, but first, let's let's take a look at Ron DeSantis dropping out of the presidential race and Russell's commentary surrounding it. Let's start with Ron DeSantis. The um, guys, the uh, buttons. Cheers. Well done, guys. Thank you. Well, I've had disagreements with <laughs> Donald Trump, group. such as on the coronavirus pandemic and his elevation of Anthony Fauci. Trump is getting that little dig in, isn't he? He's getting a little dig in there. He's sort of going, remember, I was governor of Florida and we did a good job. Superior to the current incumbent, Joe Biden. That is clear. I signed a pledge <laughs> to support the Republican nominee, and I will honor that pledge. He has my endorsement because we can't go back to the old Republican guard of yesteryear a repackage formed of warmed over corporatism that Nikki Haley represents. That's interesting. He's digging out Nikki Haley big time, isn't he? He's essentially saying, which is the same thing that the legacy media, the neoliberal establishment media would say, is that the Republican Party is now, is now formed around Donald Trump. There is no iteration of republicanism around an establishment candidate like Nikki Haley. But I wonder how many Donald Trump supporters would support him if he was independent, would support Donald <laughs> Trump if he was in the Democrat Party, would support any hue of Donald Trump, because in a sense, he is mm. transcendent, isn't he, of the ordinary <laughs> paradigm of two party or uni party politics. Would you say, am I right there? Let me know. I would say uh, <laughs> it's, it's, 
it's it's a lot what he just said. Um, I, I would say if if Donald Trump is transcendent of two party politics, then he'd be running as an independent under the Trump banner, which is what was feared by the Republicans um, for this year and would have actually been quite revolutionary for U.S. politics. Uh -huh. uh, he he'd have no doubt overtaken Ross Perot as the most successful third party candidate in history, um, and could possibly could have won the presidency as a third party candidate, which would be insane. Um, you know. It's 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 definitely I would say more possible for Trump than anyone in living memory. Um, you know what? Let's course, try. Yeah. Let's try and see what happens. <laughs> well, this is Let's it. Let's do right? it. So, so, I'm on board. So, <laughs> Of course, it would have divided the the right wing, and ultimately the Democrats will then probably have a pretty clean path to Biden's re-election come November, while the right is busy staging a civil war. Um, and so the Republicans, they knew which way to play this. Um, in doing so, they have lowered their party somehow even further by wholeheartedly yet again backing a literal coup-attempting, election-meddling, sex-offending criminal as their guy. Um, that aside, why would Trump be happy to continue as the Republican candidate if he was such a renegade, if he was truly transcendent of two-party politics, and is as anti-establishment as Russell says he is. Well, put simply, he just fucking isn't. He's an old con man who stands to make the most money and avoid prison by reclaiming the presidency. Like, he's anti-establishment only when he's not in the establishment. Well, he's anti-the establishment hmm? getting in his way. Yes, exactly. He's anti-establishment for me. A hundred percent. And if that guy's ass cheeks ever hit the president's chair in the Oval Office again, he's made it abundantly fucking clear that he will be very much pro-establishment and will begin the process of handing out retribution to all who have wronged him, using the government as his own personal mechanism of inflicting various forms of violence. So, yeah. Really just naked about it. Just saying, like, yeah. all the yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. Still in all caps, too, by the way, which nice touch. Yeah. Mwah. It's a lot. Way to go, bud. It's a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, uh, I also don't know what the point <laughs> of that, like, digression of, like, Russell saying, like, what if it was a grapefruit? Would people still support Trump? Like, like okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, where, so where are you taking this, this so buddy? vague. Where? Like, <laughs> well, yeah. Yes. Yes. And I, I, I think, um, I don't know. I I, th I think he's just, he spends a lot of time in in this show specifically just uh, just really really enjoying Riffin? some Trump. Oh, yeah, just just mm -hmm. Trump. Uh huh. Uh. Yeah, just just um yeah yeah. The mouth is full. Um. Anyway, mm. all that said, we've got a little bit more of uh, DeSantis's speech to look at. Ron DeSantis though continues. The days of putting Americans last of kowtowing to large corporations, of caving to woke ideology are over. I thank all of our passionate supporters who have stood by us through it all. Winston Churchill once remarked that success is not final, failure is not fatal, it is the courage to continue that counts. While this campaign has ended, Yeah, majesty, success is not final, victory is not complete. It's good that he, I, think, I don't think Churchill ever said that, did he? <laughs> oh, Ron. Even Russell knows that Churchill never said that quote that he just reeled <laughs> off. <laughs> that rules. Yeah, That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. That's well, albeit it's killer. It's probably it's probably just because other people reported on it after the fact, but good lord man, do a quick Google search if you're intending to quote someone in front of your entire country. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I mean, he's got a speechwriter. Like, Lip oh, what are so they doing? So much. Like, this is supposed to be to America, you know? Like, hey, America, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. It's probably a good thing I won't be president. Go with the orange dictator instead. Peace. Also, <laughs> you know? they usually like, lie dude. about Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> like, Thomas yeah, Jefferson yeah, yeah. said everything. You know, you like. Expect TJ, you know, you expect TJ, Shakespeare. Bill you expect Shakespeare. Something. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you expect Churchill's the a good one, hits. though. Yeah, there, there are a number of erroneous, uh, erroneous Churchill quotes out there. And, oh, God. And if it's yeah. toxic positivity, it's Gandhi or Jimi Hendrix, is what I have found the internet. Yes. Or yeah, Albert you know, Einstein. That's the yeah, other. That, listen, everyone has a problem with not Googling their fucking quote before they. Say yeah, it. This yeah. Is universal. Um, I've I've seen I've seen ones attributed <laughs> to Matthew McConaughey. Um, oh, yeah. You know, I'm just saying like that just... those are those 
those have been the most uh, common, mm-hmm. common and like hilarious. Like, okay, yes. guys. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, guys. Oh, dear. What is interesting about that clip, though, is that it does mean that Russell and his team can fact check things if they want to. Like, they do have the ability to look things up and check the veracity and validity of claims if they want to, meaning either they absolutely don't want to, or more likely, as we've shown them intentionally, uh, maliciously editing other people's work on this show, they know exactly what they're doing with the lies and misinformation, and that is a feature, not a bug. Uh, so, Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, Skeleton Crew. Genuinely, like, Mm -hmm. I've, and I mean, I, I don't watch the content. So mm-hmm. I and and there was a comp, you know, there was a discussion somewhere you know, floating in the ether that I've had in like the last week that has me thinking about this. Like you can see it on screen again. Right. I, I, I don't watch all the stuff, but it mm-hmm. just seems like Russell's doing a lot of riffing. And yeah, that yeah. is what you do when you have fewer people working on your content. Yeah, it doesn't feel tight necessarily, does it? You know, it, it doesn't feel curated a good chunk of the time. Yeah, um, that you is, find that another absolutely... pontificating man to like yeah. spin lore. <laughs> yeah, for like a yeah. long time. <laughs> yes, exa- exactly. Well, when it's interviews, like there, there, there's a there's an amount of control that can be exerted over that. Where, whereas it's when it's just him. On his own, that he's he's naked and afraid up there. That's that's what's happening. Oh, I'm saying in <laughs> interviews as well. Like no, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. what we've noticed. That I I mean, that's what, and maybe it's in my craw, especially because it's just goofy history nonsense, a yes. historical yeah, yeah, yeah. nonsense. Yeah, and I'm just like yeah, yeah. What are you people even saying? Well, is yeah, this just, what English is, anymore? What is the purpose of this discussion? Nobody knows anymore. Yes, no, no, no. A, yeah. A, a 100%. Yeah, yeah, 100%. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, That's what I, I'm I saying. Do think, I do think it is worse on the main show. <laughs> uh, sure, <laughs> as, as, sure, as, sure, As we will see today, I'm quite sure. But I think <laughs> oh, that that's, dear. you know, I, I mean, you're only as Skeleton good as crew. your crew, mm-hmm. you know? Because like, mm-hmm. really, that I mean, because at the end of the day, he's the face of a thing. So yeah, he can yeah. say whatever he wants, and he does, of course, have editorial control because it comes out of his mouth, and we see him add stuff that maybe is like completely off base. Mm-hmm. Um, that we know, at least I, in the limited exposure, I know that like Gareth Roy, whenever he was sitting at the table, would be like scooching him away from it and you know directing yes, a lot. Yes, yeah, more. yeah. Whereas now, when he's in unfamiliar territory, you see Russell look up. He looks up very yeah. intently at whoever's behind the camera, which is Gareth Roy, to be like. Am I full of shit? Um, well, or, well, and, uh, <laughs> which also like content. You're making content. It is what it is. But like, mm. it's just the cracks are showing. Maybe they aren't. Yeah. I don't know. But mm. it's that's how it's striking me because I, you know, I'm not allowed to check out stuff, and frankly, not n- not the best afternoon I could spend. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like from yeah. what I see is like, oh, okay, oh, ah, mm. yeah, it's riffing. Yeah, no, nope. lots I'm of just hundred percent. Swimming around in the pool, just paddling, got your floaties, kicking your feet, just grooving. Yep, and uh, <laughs> and we, charging we've, people we've... money to watch. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Ugh. absolute fortune. Ugh. Um, and we've we've got a little more grooving about in the water to go, uh, because we've got the last section of DeSantis's speech here, and then something awfully revealing about Russell's audience. The mission continues down here in Florida. We will continue to show the country how to lead. Thank you and God bless. Very chirpy and cheerful, isn't it? Like, I think people are nicer when they move away from politics, don't you? Have you never noticed when they go, <laughs> when they're out of races, you sort of go, oh, it's like they've had their, that thing pulled out of their head out of the matrix. They just seem a lot kind of sweeter to me when I see them. We asked you a lot earlier what, uh, who you'd vote for or who do you think the next president of the United States would be. A mega 2% Nikki Haley and 4% Joe Biden and 94% of you Donald Trump. So that's uh, good oh, news oh, oh. Uh, for the numerous folk here who evidently love um, um, the Donald Trump there. Oh, pretty damning numbers. Um, this, Spicy. This is a- that's uh-huh. a spicy it's, meatball right there. <laughs> right. It's, 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 it's a poll posted to Russell's Twitter slash X account, and it's only based on about two hours of polling, the one that he's showing. So having given it a couple of days to shake out, the numbers appear as follows um, as to 
who Russell's audience want to be the next POTUS, right? So 3.1% went to Nikki Haley, uh, 12% went to Joe Biden, so there's an improvement there, and 85% for Donald Trump, which actually leaves us with 100.1% because X is stupid and can't even do a poll correctly. Uh, okay. Nonetheless, people can sing the song of Russell being uh, not being right-wing as much as they like, but the incredibly obvious reality is that someone who is not right-wing does not attract an audience of people who are made up almost entirely of right-wingers. <laughs> um, especially not Trumpers. Trump fans. Mm -hmm, Trumpers. Yeah. They're very, very often, uh, especially when in these media spaces, skewing to the extreme right. Um, the mental gymnastics required to hold that belief in your head is quite something. Like, oh, he's not right wing. Just almost his entire audience is right wing, and almost all of his guests are right wing, and also almost all of the things coming out of his mouth are right wing, and and vociferously anti left wing. But uh, he's not right wing. Well, and like not just right wing, Meg. Mm. That's yeah. its yeah. own breed that All I think right. I think mm. that people well I mean just that even is like an outmoded kind of you know yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. phrase yeah. genuinely yeah. like yeah, yeah. at least in my you know in my experience what hits my eyeballs and then get shot to my brain is people are at least admitting that the difference you know of like even just and not saying it's separate from the Republican Party, because I think that was the argument, the never Trumpers, you know, mm -hmm. that was like a mm -hmm. thing. And now we're at least um, that people can kind of plead ignorance with. But now it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just right versus left. This is MAGA. Like, this is a guy who is just facing so many indictments and so, like, oh, yeah. And not oh, yeah. trying at all to campaign really like he doesn't have to like he doesn't have to he doesn't have to yeah yeah no no he's 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 i mean he's he's showing up to these um to these you know victory events and, and that's, that's just about it because he likes it <laughs> he's, it's not oh yeah he, he loves that to. yeah no, want, no 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 oh no he didn't he wouldn't have to at all no but yeah, he, he wants to show he up wants to his little be, playground he wants to be seen as, as victorious things. and have a bunch of people be like we love you yeah and like, well, okay yeah. Uh, uh, they're yeah. pep rallies Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh -huh, absolutely. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, speaking of being anti-left, uh, we have some shit to fling at Joe Biden. Hey, you know, Joe Biden maybe should be dismissed by uh, Judge Judy. Because did you see, they did a speech oh, where... I forgot. I forgot to write this in. Uh, did you see that Judge Judy had um, has uh, has endorsed Nikki Haley? Did you see that? <sighs> Yeah, I mean, who, who gives a shit? On one hand, um, Russell Russell covered it. I cut it out because it was pointless conversation. Yeah, um, <laughs> weird. It's That's it's very it's weird. It's incredibly weird. Yeah, no, I think the only other person that she's endorsed was um, Michael Bloomberg. Was the, was the only other person that she'd ever okay, endorsed? Okay, well, um, I think. <laughs> no. I know, but she she did say something. For a nap, I think yes, she did say something I agreed with, which was that both Biden and Trump are too old. I'm like, okay, fair enough. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you would know you want. Yeah, I was going to say like, so, okay. you would know. <laughs> fair, fair. I trust enough. your no, assessment. I, sure, I, I respect that. I respect. I, I judge. I respect your judgment in that situation. Mm -hmm. Good going. Anyway, let's get to the rest <laughs> of the clip. He got mixed up between <laughs> Ukraine and Congress. Ukraine and Congress. Are they the same thing? Certainly a lot of money from Congress ends up in Ukraine to generate what? Have you been watching the globalists? More peace. How do you get peace? War, obviously. That's how you get it. Let's see Biden, perhaps understandably, mixing up Ukraine and Congress. We also need Ukraine to make changes to fix the broken immigration system here. We Seems like a bit too much to ask. I mean, we need that war with Russia. You know, Putin's very aggressive. They're being bombed daily. The spring offensive didn't go well. BlackRock are queuing up on the borders to create a digital pilot world where ordinary workers will be disempowered. You know already that the media in Ukraine have seen control of all of their uh, national media organizations, their TV channels. You know already that 
Gonzalo Lira has died in prison in Ukraine. One of the journalists whose free speech doesn't have to be supported. That, you know. So Ukraine have got a lot on their plate. And by the way, if you are Ukrainian or you know someone that's suffering in that war in Ukraine, then, oh my God, I've got total sympathy and compassion for you. I wish this war would end. We also need Congress <laughs> sure. to make the changes to fix the broken immigration system here at home. Maybe just ask Ukraine. I don't know what Congress is going to do in the end. <laughs> the whole thing's so ridiculous. Oh boy. Um yeah, so spends a good couple of minutes shitting on Ukraine and then gives his best hand wringing sympathies to the people of Ukraine. Like, fuck off, Russell. You're a pro Putin Russian propagandist spouting idiot who does more harm to the Ukraine than most Russian soldiers have ever managed. Um now. Now <laughs> just I, like I would a say so. like just Yeah, yeah. Is this what we have? Yeah, yeah, but well, this is it. This is it. It's, it's fucking weak tea. Um, so Biden, he said Ukraine where he meant to say Congress. Big fucking whoop. Old man who famously struggles with public speaking says wrong word in a speech. But no, we have to make as much fucking hay out of it as possible. And this is this is a damn near daily occurrence on Stay Free with Russell Brand. And it's as pathetic and transparent as ever. And I've mostly included that there clip because it's something that I want you to bear in mind for later. Right, right, um, right, right, right. Yeah. But yeah. before we move on, I do want to briefly touch on the journalist dying in prison that Russell was talking about, mm -hmm. Gonzalo Lira. Uh, very naturally, Russell, Tucker, and all their ilk are using this story to say, Aha! See, Zelensky is assassinating dissenting voices in Ukraine! Um, while, of course, making absolutely zero mention of Putin's well-documented history mm -hmm. of imprisoning, assassinating, or disappearing mm -hmm. journalists. Mm -hmm. um, this is where, whole... where my head went. Yep, yep. It's it's yeah. it's been a whole thing. Um, Russell's been hammering on it hard. Tucker did a full twenty minutes on it. Um, so yeah, let, let's take a quick look at the reality of the situation. Uh, so Gonzalo Lira was a Chilean American novelist, filmmaker, and political commentator, YouTuber, and self-styled dating coach. Um, oh, that's I'm out. That's an interesting, Bye. <laughs> interesting addition on the end there, isn't it? Where is the button uh, for that trap door? Okay, uh -huh. yeah, 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 gets, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, your instincts are. Are, uh, are finally tuned because he was involved in the Manosphere, uh, posting anti-feminist content under the name of Coach Red Pill. Um, according to him, <laughs> women women are whores and damaged and should be treated exactly like dogs. Uh, okay. uh huh. Uh, well, he was. Sir, um, mm, this is a mm, Wendy's. Mm. What are we doing? <laughs> right. Oh boy. Huh. Yeah. Great. Uh, he was yeah. uh, he was li he was living in Kharkiv when um, the Russian military launched a full scale invasion of Ukraine back in February 2022. Uh, Lira gained a following by posting online content um, hostile to the Ukrainian government and its president Zelensky. Uh, he branded Zelensky a cokehead and described the Russian operation as one of the most brilliant invasions in military history. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, on the merits of that statement alone, I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah, know, no. bud. I can think uh, of just... more successful, oh, brilliant God, ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I from the last century alone, there, there, there are definitely, there are definitely. I mean, ones. and also um, many times in history, somebody really scary has shown up, and people are like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I say yeah. those are the most effective. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, is the not absolutely. military at all? Like military yeah. just like gets dressed and goes to work, and that's kind of it. I'd <laughs> yeah. say that's the most efficient and effective. Yeah, uh -huh. one guy shows up and the whole place goes. Yep, we're, he's yep, like, all we're, right, we're, we're, we're yours now. Okay. Where are your diplomats? Yeah. Where would you like us to send our taxes now? Okay, we'll figure yes, it out. Yeah, that's that's fine. Those are I'd say the most. Yes, I, I impressive. I, I, I would, I, yes, I, I would agree. Um, yeah, 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 Lira yeah, yeah. <laughs> was arrested by Ukraine's internal security agency, the SBU, on May 1st, 2023, before being released on bail. Uh, he subsequently released a video saying he was going to try and leave the country before being almost immediately rearrested for breaching his bail conditions. One of the usual uh, conditions of bail, for reference to anyone who doesn't know, is that you have to stay in the country. Uh -huh. um, that's pretty normal Flight everywhere. Risk is the yeah, phrase that's the, that's the word. Yeah, that exactly. We yeah. commonly use. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and this guy was a literal flight risk. Um, speaking about Lira's arrest, the Ukrainian government's Center for Strate Strategic Communication and Information Security, also known as Spravdi, uh, said Lira had been charged with justifying Russian aggression against Ukraine in violation of Article 463-2 of the country's criminal code. As for his death, um, well, obviously he was back in prison for breaching the terms of his bail, and um, this is from a letter sent to his sister. Quote, I have had double pneumonia, both lungs, as well as pneumothorax and a very severe case of edema, uh, swelling of the body. Mm. All this started in mid-October, but was ignored by the prison. They only admitted I had pneumonia at a December 22nd hearing. I am about to have a procedure to reduce the edema pressure in my lungs, which is causing me extreme shortness of breath to the point of passing out after minimal activity, or even just talking for two minutes. Uh, he later died, uh, unquote, sorry. He later died at the age of 55 in Kharkiv Hospital, where he was being treated for his pneumonia. His father, Gonzalo Lira Sr., has asserted that his son was tortured, extorted, and incommunicado for eight months and 11 days. And listen, I'm not going to come for someone who's grieving, grieving over the death of their child. Um, but there is no evidence to support what he's saying. And the last post to Lira Jr.'s ex account was from July 31st, 2023. So less than six months ago. Um, despite this, Gonzalo Sr. was the one in direct con contact with Tucker Carlson, who then took everything the guy said and ran with it. Huh. Uh, yeah. Also, so none it, of those things that you listed are are uh, deserve the death penalty, and nope. I just it's a little sad for me to know that. Well, this happens in American prisons all the time. Uh, sure. There is that um, being common is not doesn't mean any of it's right, but no, that no, no. still isn't polonium poisoning. Right, exactly. Um, so, so in summary, what happened is this guy fucked around with the laws of a country in wartime, found out and went to jail, was released on bail, fucked around some more by trying to flee the country and went to prison, where he subsequently got pneumonia, which was then treated, and then he sadly died. Um, if Lyra Jr.'s account that his symptoms weren't recognized or treated for two months, then yes, that is absolutely a problem that deserves scrutiny. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem is, by him repeatedly lying about anything the Ukraine or Zelensky do or have done, we can't exactly just take his word for it that they didn't treat his illness in an appropriate amount of time. Um, it's kind of a boy who cries wolf situation. Um, also, and this is something to note purely because of the way it's being used by Tucker and Russell, the man was not a journalist. He was a content creator and Russian propaganda mouthpiece, but he was not a journalist. He's never worked for any journalistic institution, be it legacy media or independent. And I don't think any of the things that he posted could be described as journalistic in nature. Okay. Like this, <laughs> well... Now, <laughs> Uh, it's, it's that's a, the it's thing a, that i yeah. uh ooh, that's, yeah. the, that's ooh, that's the um excuse me sir <laughs> like that's that's the red flag for me that's like yeah and well it's, it's, it's really important mm. to bear in mind right because had an american actual journalist been over in the ukraine reporting on the war and they'd been imprisoned there would have been a very different fucking response from the u.s government and the media as a whole and if you're interested in counter examples anyone take a look at the many many actual journalists that putin has had killed or disappeared or imprisoned um which again goes completely unmentioned by these dickheads but but, you know, generally there is coverage somewhere in, in the media of these things happening when we right. find out about them. Um, yeah, you know. well, and, and this is a very unfortunate, very fucking unfortunate reality. It's we just were talking yeah. about this a little bit off air before we started recording. But like the very unfortunate reality that like uh, circumstances around the prison industrial complex in whatever given area do affect how prisoners and inmates are cared for. Yeah. Um, so even just prisons being worse because of war is, is yeah. a reality in, in and of itself that needs to be addressed. And also I would hope that like, if mystery, the pickup artist <laughs> does something similar <laughs> that mm, Calling him a journalist is a little rich. It's a bit of a stretch. It, f it felt like a little bit much to me. Yeah, yeah, that's that's that's, that's what I thought. Kind of wild. Uh, <laughs> kind of yeah, wild. Yeah, 
Yes, yeah. um, but you know, Russell and Tucker are treating this guy as a, as a martyr to the cause um, because they can. Um, hmm. So yeah, it's good time, good times. Anyway, we get back to DeSantis' talk. Uh, this time, showing Trump's speech responding to DeSantis dropping out. Let's have a look at Donald Trump giving, uh, conveying his largesse to Ron DeSantis. And there's a bit where he's even going to retire the nickname. Is it Meatball Ron or the Sanctimonious? Meatball Ron is still keeping going. Before we begin, I'd like to take time to congratulate Ron DeSantis. And, of course, a really terrific person who had gotten to know his wife, Casey, for having run a great campaign for president because like that's that's the next thing he does getting to know his wife casey just sort of like that's just how his mind that's where it took him next his mind and what will i say he trusts himself doesn't he and i think <laughs> that in this time of universal treachery where you know that the current incumbent is not even really capable of authenticity because as he said himself when on the campaign trial to wall street nothing will fundamentally change in spite of all the external rhetoric in spite of all the will make saudi arabia a pariah behind closed doors to financial donors he said nothing will change yeah no i didn't say that um we've we've covered that before yeah. uh he was telling an audience of people to vote against their own interests because if they voted for him they'd be paying more in taxes but it would be better for the country um you know biden saying that uh, nothing will fundamentally change comment was him trying to assuage fears that suddenly these people would be down here with the rest of us um what biden was saying was basically hey vote for me and you'll still be rich don't worry you'll just be a little bit less rich and you can feel like you really took one for the team when you do it and you can tell all your friends about your gracious sacrifice for the good of the country. Um, yeah, also, results? Meeting... What actually happened? Yeah, mm. yeah no idea. Um, but, no, from it, from, from, no, from that's that, not... from, from <laughs> like, that specifically. Yeah, what I'm mm. saying is like there's not. Um, yeah, I don't know. No, I, no, I, exactly. I have a hard time uh, calling back to like. You know what? In the first oh, year this, of a this presidency, is from, this is from 2020 as well. That's what I'm this saying. Like the first election, year of a president, you know? right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and mm. I'm saying that, like, uh, I don't think that we get to even, um, unless we are examining campaign promises versus campaign delivery, like delivery on promises. Mm -hmm. Why are we still talking about that? Why are we even yeah. still talking about it? You want to uh, you want to call it hypocrisy? Do this it. Is, There's plenty. It's, it's it's something that Russell can remember in the moment. That's why. <laughs> That's why it's come up. <laughs> sure. It's just off the top sure. of the dome. Um, and and yeah, needing needing political donors is gross from the outset. But you know, let's let's at least address what Biden's saying honestly. And you can critique it from there. You can you can I make a reasonable critique about the same moment. <laughs> Just come at it from a way that's got yeah. a little squish yeah. of reality in it. Like you can complain. Yeah. I have a million complaints. I'm not thrilled about any of it. But like, no, it's all terrible. <laughs> but you know, at least base it in reality. Like yeah. because you can. You you can make legitimate complaints. Ugh. Um. As for Trump trusting himself when he speaks, that's absolutely fucking true. If there was ever a politician with a lack of a filter, it's this guy. Um. Which is why his unfiltered mind went immediately and very obviously from Ron DeSantis to Oh yeah, that guy's wife is pretty hot, isn't she? I, I've been trying to hit that for a while. Um. Like that's definitely well, where his mind went. Uh, oh, I, I got. I say that's a leap. But also, uh, you just... think okay, maybe, maybe I'm not being very generous with his thought patterns. But somebody proved me wrong based on the life and times of Donald J. Trump that that's exactly what he wasn't thinking I in mean, the moment. I mean, he's old too. I don't. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, the, I don't the, know. Yeah. But even just like this, that's this, that's pandering. It's pandering on its face. Mm. It's like yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, oh yeah, talking about some. The thing is, is also it's nice to mention somebody's wife when they've done a lot mm -hmm. of work. Good. It's the easiest possible thing sure. that every single politician should be able to say but also nepotism because you should be hiring people to do your job not just hiring your wife and children so we know maybe that's a little more like I, I, I to think, me I what think, trump think, is still yeah. very involved in right now i, I was gonna say i think i think you might be saying that kids. to the uh might be saying that to the wrong politician that's, that's I, just uh <laughs> I think mean, I know exactly who I'm listening to. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Great way to keep um, it in the fam, dog, I think is what. Yep. Yep. You know? Um, I mean, be nice to people's spouses. That's great. But like sure, maybe sure. 
maybe opening open up the hiring pool in a political sphere. <laughs> That's all. Maybe maybe That's not all. a bad idea. Yeah. Um. Either way, that right Eesh. there, um, the, that whole thing is what we need more of, according to Russell. Um, we're we're going to move on a little, and um, we have a tease for what we've all been waiting for, which is Russell talking about Soros. But um, but first, we have a little bit of a linguistic discussion. We've got an interesting story about Alex Soros, son of George Soros, turning up in Ireland, meeting the, I'm going to say the Irish Pirate Prime Minister, but I know that ain't the right word. It's like the day of siege. Or the tea siege, you know, like often uh, to an English person, a lot of Irish spelling is difficult. But I recognise that there's no sort of objectivity, I suppose, with the use of the language. Otherwise, you wouldn't have a word like two or that G and H in the middle of a word like night. I think you mean Knigget, Russell. Mm -hmm. Get it right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, heavily, heavily curated uh, content. This one, um, hard hitting stuff. Uh, so. The leader of Ireland is their uh, Taoiseach, which which is spelt T A O I S E A C H. Um, so the A O I sounding out as an E. Um, the S, like the T, is just a T. Uh, the S often uh, softens to a sh sound, and the E A reads like red or bed. And the C H works the same way as it does in Welsh with a ch, right? So Taoiseach. Reason I'm bringing this up um, is that it was a couple of months now uh, now since Russell covered the white nationalist riot that happened in Dublin, um, and through the entire thing, he called the leader of Ireland the Irish Prime Minister, which just isn't the correct title. Um, it's come up occasionally since then, and every time, oh, it's the Irish Prime Minister, and now he's at least gone so far as to say, entirely the comments butcher, finally got to yeah. him. Yeah, no, he's 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 gone so far as to entirely butcher the pronunciation before again saying Irish Prime Minister. Well, um, in another what four or five months, we'll get there. Maybe, maybe. Uh, Taoiseach translates to chief or leader. It's written into the Irish Constitution as such. Um, it has comparable roots in Scottish Gaelic, so Tosach and uh, Tawasog in Welsh. Um, it's a title steeped in history and meaning, and I dare say is of enough importance for the Irish. people people to use that word for their leader instead of prime minister very intentionally mm -hmm. um and russell is such a lazy piece of shit that he or a member of his staff can't even be bothered to google the pronunciation of the word which takes all of 10 seconds <laughs> oh he'll get Lord there above. they'll google yeah. it at, in march listen and we'll be here Next year, when they finally yeah. nail it and we'll throw a little ticker tape parade <laughs> <He'll>, <laughs> I, get there. I will i, I will believe yeah, he'll it's, it's, get there I, 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 enough voice I'm, messages. I'm, I'm, People I'm, come I'm through <laughs> the rumble chat I'm, or something. Tishak, <laughs> you fucking. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, um, yeah, I'm far less optimistic than you, but, uh, but we shall see. Yeah, and, and sorry for the slight diversion. It's just disrespectful. Has been pissing me off for literal months. Sure. So there we go. <laughs> also, optimism is not yeah. <laughs> motivating <laughs> my claim. <laughs> Fair. It's something entirely. It ain't optimistic. Entirely, there's something. Yeah, no, entirely fair. Entirely God fair. God bless him. Oh, bless his dear. heart. Anyway, that little bit works as a lead into not the Alex Soros story, but actually a little bit more Trump talk. For fuck's sake. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I know. All right. This is this is this is a longer clip, but bear with me. You know, the English language is pretty crazy. It has all sorts of odd things going on. But is it as odd as what goes on in Donald Trump's shower? At this point, he's literally just doing stand-up. He's got that audience in the palm of his hands. Check this out. So, you know, little things like your sink. You know, you buy a sink and no water comes out because they have <laughs> regulators on the water. Even if you're in a state where water comes out it's of heaven all day country. long. Does it make any difference? Uh, when you take a shower, I like to have, you know, I have this gorgeous head of hair. I like. <laughs> That's a my gorgeous head of hair. Now, you know, we've all seen him. Do you remember when he was president and he went on Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Fallon done that thing where he ruffled his hair, where the hair was a very sort of like was a real front, wasn't it? There was one of the interfaces upon which he was steadily and readily attacked. And now he does that joke. He does that joke. Gorgeous head of hair. That's comedic. 
You know, when you're doing screenwriting, like if you're writing a play, I went, uh, screenplay, excuse me. I once went on a course, right, to like learn how you write screenplays. And it's pretty interesting because they teach you about archetypes. This was a guy called Bob McGee, very sort of influential teacher who was played by Brian Cox out of Succession and Hannibal Lecter in a film called Adaptation starring Nick Cage. And he tells you stuff like, oh, if you yeah. want a character to be liked by your audience, they have to either be brave or they have to be vulnerable. And he added another thing using Bill Murray in Groundhog Day. He said, if a character is funny, people will like that character. And you think about it, like a character like Bill Murray in Groundhog Day, there's no real reason to like him, except he's kind of funny from the get-go. Trump's funny. It's another thing that people are not including in their ongoing analysis or indeed condemnation of him. Hmm. Russell, Did... <laughs> are you saying that if you're funny, you can get away with bullshit because people will forgive you? Are we sure <laughs> we should be saying that into a fucking camera with a microphone recording your words? Okay, this is a little... Uh, I, am I being... Is this a prank? I feel like I'm being pranked. <laughs> you're being punked. Aye, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> it feels, feels a little bit like that. And, and, and I mean, you know, the... If you if you rewatch Groundhog Day, um, you know Bill Murray's character does uh, does not come across as great um, in hindsight, you know. Um, but yeah, the, the I mean that's entirely is, true though. Like yeah, that's yeah. that's part of and yeah. adaptation. I love adaptation. So like yeah, that's that's. And I forgot Brian Cox. Wow. So he was, was he was yeah. taught by that guy. He was taught by the guy that Brian Cox played. There we go. Sure, uh, but <laughs> also the yeah. Anyway, that's a digression. But like, yeah. I j okay, the amount of work that Russell has to do to even get to praise is just he's running a marathon <laughs> to what get to it? a place where he can like. F it sounds like praise. And it's yeah, so well, such a stretch. Yeah, I, I think I, I think the you you've kind of already touched on um on on a big problem that we have here, and he's just he's been given too much time and too much free reign, and he'll he'll just like oh yeah, I'll tell this story about about archetypes and this and the, the, what all he all he had to say there was. Trump is funny, isn't he? And pe people don't seem to acknowledge that enough. And out of interest, do you find Trump funny, Lauren? By, by which I mean the jokes that Trump okay. makes. Because mm. there's a distinction, right? Oh, well, I think that dads getting whacked in the nuts of the whiff of all that by their kid on video, that makes me chuckle. That's funny. So in that regard, or like mm -hmm. cats falling off of shelves... Cats pulling a, an AC unit out of the wall and falling oh, over. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, or taking down a whole TV. Who? Hilarious. Uh, and I feel at this point, and uh, what else is funny is like, at least in my content sphere and the leftist kind of content sphere, um, some more positive and some more nihilistic, I think, than others, uh, mm -hmm. have admitted that like, I mean, he's funny. Just in well, a way that well, dad getting whacked in the nuts is funny. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, I, I, I think the, the the cat pulling over the TV is kind of um, kind of an apt comparison because, like, it's funny yeah. as long as it's not your TV. Um, exactly, and, and, exactly and, and, and that. Tr tr yeah. Trump is pulling over the TV that is America. Um, and and uh -huh. so from my uh -huh. perspective, I, I can and will often laugh at Trump for being a dumbass, at, but. Not with. I, uh, no. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I can't recall even once laughing with Trump at something that he said. Um, and really, I do wonder whether the political divide can be summed up as succinctly as that. Like, there are those who laugh at Trump's jokes and those who do not. And that's fucking it. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, there's there there have been moments that are funny because he's also like he is a person who has been publicly affable and entertaining mm -hmm. For oh, yeah. decades, yeah, yeah. so he's gonna like he's gonna nail it occasionally. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, also, he's got somebody the saying, and all that. yeah, right, like yeah. someone having like saying such absurd things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're funny sometimes. I I think mm -hmm. that there was a there was a reluctance, and I, justifiably, there was a reluctance, especially like in the news when mm. they should have been reluctant to cover Trump. As a cool. sensational, you know, like a, a yep. attention grab. They yep. should have been reluctant for that, but they were reluctant to admit that, like, he said 
things that m give you a chuckle. And yeah. I think that now we're at least past that. Like we're all kind of grown ups, understanding that that is part of what is working in his favor. And we need to look yeah. at look at the boots on the ground concerns of like, OK, well, what's working for him? And we need to admit it. We just need to admit it and be realistic. Yeah, about yeah. It. The, the, there's no sense being macabre about the whole situation, you know, because you, you, and, and, it's and, not you know, accurate. Every, every, every time you cover him, just be like, no. You know, yeah, it's, being it's, it's inaccurate not, isn't going to help your cause. Yeah, no, no, it, it sounds it sounds like denial because it is. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, 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 that's, yeah. That's what's there happening. There it is. Um, there it is. Anyway, it, Russell thinks that Trump is hilarious. Um, and do you know that there, there was a time where it was quite obvious to me that a lot of the Trump love from Russell was sycophantic in nature, right? So like insincere. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but but he wanted to toe the line that his audience wants, as as we saw in the poll just now. Um, but by this point, I, I do think that Russell is very genuinely charmed by the man, um, which which I th it's making it even more gross. This clip me, but, uh, is mm. what tells me, at least on some level, he identifies with Trump because he's funny yeah. to get away with bullshit. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah it, it's it's uh, the motivation is pretty apparent here the, the parallels between the between the two people are kind of interesting when you start to examine them and uh not in a good way um interesting no, in an academic a damning kind of way, way i think mm, yeah, interesting yeah. for, for psychologists to examine in the years to come um, uh so we're we're gonna move on but we're, we're still talking about trump um because we're still talking about trump uh but this time we're gonna move over to how the left in the legacy media Media are covering him. Vodka Rob, people seem to forget that Hitler was a socialist. Yes, of course, Nazism is uh, okay. an uh, uh, idiom uh, uh, or phrase uh, derived from nationalism and socialism. It was a kind of Germany first for the workers ideal that was, of course, tragically infused with racism, hatred, genocide, <laughs> and warmongering. Let's um, have a look at uh, hmm. Morning Joe being, you know, sort of reductive haughty, supercilious, condemnatory, damning ordinary people with a kind of metropolitan loathing that we're only too accustomed uh, to by now. Really? We, we, we have to get the, we'll get to the Hitler stuff in a second. Okay. But coming up. Coming up indeed. Um, 2024, Hitler, Mark II, vote Trump, everybody. Um, so, <laughs> so what happened at the beginning of that clip was interesting. Um, so a member of the Rumble chat very obviously attempted to shit on socialism, right, which you picked up on, by saying, aha, Hitler was a socialist. I um, really thought that was done. I really did. I was like, the oh, whole no. internet, oh, no, guys. No, 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 no. They, they still, I know. they still. I know. Communism is, 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 is Mao. You know, it's, it's, it's the, it's the whole thing. Uh, um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, na but Russell. National. Yeah, but come on. Um, Russell, <laughs> knowing the actual you know meaning of socialism because he used to pretend to be one, mm -hmm. um, pivoted back to what Nazism was actually about and describes it as a kind of Germany first for the workers' ideal that was tragically infused with racism, hatred, genocide, and warmongering. <laughs> now. Genocide is a critique that can, at this point, best be leveled at the current president, but the rest of that stuff, if you replace Germany with America first being infused with racism, hatred, and warmongering, it begins to feel very fucking familiar, doesn't it? Ding, um, ding, ding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now, e now, yeah. Yada, 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 no wars while Trump was in office and all that bullshit, but he fucking well wanted to bomb both North Korea and Iran, you know, so hold your horses yeah. on that one, also, Trumpers. Also... <laughs> As uh, uh, th the time that I've spent living in this country is, <laughs> I have seen, correct me if I'm wrong, mm. but this is just, this is my overview of <laughs> conservative presidents, right wing presidents making royal fucking shit messes that land right on the liberals doorstep whenever they yep. get into power and yep. they are terrible at handling it you would think that the democrats 
you know, capital D and liberals, fucking neolibs in general, would be a little better prepared knowing yeah. that they are going to be wading into a diarrhea pool as Should soon be used as it to happens. It by now. <laughs> yeah, maybe be a little better prepared. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe try to do something about that rather than just like wandering into this nightmare and be like, oh no, I'm covered in, uh, you <laughs> know, I've been covered in spikes in this crazy spike forest. Like, come on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is, this is something that happens over and over and then they can blame it on the person that has to deal with the consequences a hundred percent guys and, and <laughs> no one's good what are we doing it's just <laughs> <laughs> and 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 again to speak to the the no wars under trump thing it's like well okay he didn't make he didn't start any foreign wars okay but i i feel like the country with the murder he, he, he could have and and wanted to and kind of yeah. tried to a couple yeah. of times. Yeah. Thankfully, there were there were people around him who treated him like a literal child uh. and prevented him from doing so. Yeah. Um, and also, I will say he did kind of ignite something of a civil war within the country. So you know, there is also that if you really want to kind of examine it properly in full oh, focus. Yeah. But but you know, I yeah, mean, he tra- like, but me. even with his with his foreign policy. It's not for lack of trying. Yeah, like yeah. it just didn't happen. Yeah. Not for lack yeah. of trying. Is especially especially in that final year, he was really fucking pushing for one. Yeah. He wanted to he wanted to have that to see him through. He literally he had watched House of Cards and was like, I need to do that. He watched George Bush. <laughs> I, I need to do that. He watched he watched <laughs> he watched Bush. Yeah, he watched. He was he was there for nine eleven. Yeah, knows. yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. He was very happy that his his building was now um, yeah. doing better. Yeah, what a yeah, piece of shit. Cool. Um, anyway, all of all of that about Hitler and all of that, and not even a moment of self reflection there from Russell <laughs> before he just starts throwing shit at M- MSNBC and their Morning Joe show and. Let's hear what Morning Joe has to say about Trump. Donald Trump is not well. We know this. That's the sort of, like, what what are you saying, man? What's that about? That's why they got excited when he had those red things on his hands. Some of you lot in the chat said that was from golf, huh? Like he plays golf or whatever. But like, that's, sometimes I feel bad when we are rude about Joe Biden, when we go like, oh, he looks like a waxen, cadaverous, near zombie emerging from the sepulcher, a tomb dweller, a death cheater. I don't feel good about it because I think, oh, he's a human being. Sure, child mate. Of God. He's been through <laughs> you just reeled off a like five, long, five, child five and all thing that kind of stuff. And I feel bad about that. <laughs> yeah, but, you cash on checks. You know, we are mucking around and we're comedians. They're meant to be sort of like, we're the news. We're all serious comedians, and better though. than you. Do as we tell you. And they're still sort of making kind of personal jibes. Stupid. But this this guy, he's he's looking so old. He's shuffling around. He's going through. You can't attack. If the guy you're supporting is Joe Biden, who won't stand in primaries and can't stand very well at all, who goes into bike shops and seems to be baffled and confused by helmets, mistaking them for tiny little round people, you can't attack Donald Trump for his cognitive abilities you see the dude day after day being amusing and present on stage that is not the issue we are up on locals time now to become an awakened wonder if you're watching us on youtube someone here said uh, wouldn't care but it's elder abuse to keep joe biden in power i do think we're at that point now i do agree with you yep um so i sniff those helmets that is an interesting comment in context well done good work guys <sighs> gross okay um, Don't, good work guys mm, good work that was so <laughs> like you just said mm. it russell take your own advice or just embrace it just be like fuck yeah i hate this guy and i like this other one because that's what's happening again let's just be fucking real here like mm. sir <laughs> i i uh, I hate that I feel like these people are all so wacky that I have to start saying, sir, to pretend in my mind to get like, they're not hearing me. <laughs> and I still feel like I have yeah, to be especially you, polite you do, to get yeah. their attention in my mind. That's oh, how right. like yeah, yeah. unhinged <laughs> this kind of like really blatant, like hypocrisy shakes out. Like, mm-hmm. it's okay. <clears throat> do it also, or don't. Um, do it or don't. I don't know if it's the same in the US, but helmet over here is another euphemism for the tip of one's penis. Um, so uh, yeah, so what? when it, so when that when, when that YouTube when that commenter said, "Oh yeah, s- sniff the helmets," um, that's that's why Russell was like, "Oh, good work, guys, good work." No, uh, no, it's because the because uh, Joe Biden sniffs women's hair. 
I think I that's know, what that I, was referring. I and... Sniffs women's hair, and then he got confused about helmets in a bike shop, oh, according yeah. to Russell. And uh, but but helmets is also a double entendre, and and that's what Russell is finding. Hilarious I guess I didn't get that, uh, but okay. British, it's a British thing. I think I think that's 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 why I I I see him. I understand this guy's fucking sense of humor. Um. So okay. First, first thing to deal with here um, is the incredibly obvious. Uh, not ten minutes before in this show, Russell was having a merry old time taking the piss out of Joe Biden for mixing up his words. He does this often, um, even if it's just a look in Biden's eyes or a weird motion that, say, an old guy might do. Russell seizes on it at every available opportunity and is merciless in his mocking of Joe Biden. He said it. To- mm-hmm. It's almost a yeah. he said it. Like it's. It, but- but- <laughs> According to his telling of it, Morning Joe are doing the same thing here. They're making personal jibes, which is stupid, and they clearly just have nothing to level at Donald Trump. Um, and you know he can do it because he's a comedian, despite calling himself a journalist. I don't know how many fucking times. Uh, but no, I'm a comedian, I can do it. They're supposed to be the news, um, and it's elder abuse to keep Joe Biden in office. Let's ignore that Trump is only three years younger, shall we? Um, it's such an obvious and tragic transparent, hypocritical double standard, it's a wonder that any of Russell's fans can think at all with this much cognitive dissonance going on, but hey, maybe that's the point. Um, anyway, what I really want to deal with um, is, I don't know if you noticed, but there was an obvious edit in the middle of that morning Joe clip. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They all mm-hmm. jumped just a little bit. Um, uh-huh. And the clip, itself, the clip itself just seems to kind of come in out of nowhere as well and jump about a bit to present a very specific image of what was said. Yeah. Would you like to see the full clip, Lauren? Oh, boy. This also, <laughs> it was already bad. All right. Mm-hmm. Let's party. Yeah. Let's Hell take yeah. a look at what they were actually saying on Morning Joe. <laughs> and it, be- it begins with a clip from Trump himself. The president of the United States, and I'm not talking about myself, I'm talking about any president, has to have immunity. Because if you take immunity away from the president, so important, you will have you will have a president that's not going to be able to do anything. Because when he leaves office, the opposing party president, if it's the opposing party, will indict the president for doing something that should have been good. Like Obama dropped missiles and they ended up hitting a kindergarten or a school or the uh, apartment house. A lot of people were killed. Well, if that's the case, he's going to end up being indicted when he leaves office. He meant well. The missile went in the wrong direction and other things. And other things. There's so much, Willie, wrong with that. Wait, wrong? What yeah. president? He's talking about he, Obama. He still, first of all, we, <laughs> we, we have to get the, we'll get to the Hitler stuff in a second. Okay. But let's start, though, with. I'll make a chart. The fact that Donald Trump is not well. We know this. But this, this guy, he's, he's looking so old. He's shuffling around and he really does think that Barack Obama is still president of the United States. He's going through this thing and, and then about why he should have total immunity, total immunity, even when he crosses the line, right? This is the SEAL Team Six can assassinate. Yeah. And, and by the way, Jenna Goldberg, uh, I think it was this morning, Jenna Goldberg, uh, uh, tweeted out this morning, what do Trump supporters say who believe that SEAL Team 6 can assassinate political rivals? What do they say if someone says, well, then Joe Biden could order SEAL Team 6 this morning to assassinate Donald Trump? And he would be immune even like- by Donald Trump's arguments. It is pure, sheer authoritarianism and tyranny. So we have that part of it. It's, it is... Trump at his most dangerous, but also Trump at, at, at his most detached from reality. He's really losing it. You, you, we, we've been getting glimpses now of him shuffling around, uh, and, and, and looking lost and getting up on stage, talking about World War II, talking about President Obama. And here he did it again and said, listen, President Obama, may have bombed kindergartens, but he was trying to do good things. And when he leaves office, what? when he leaves office, he could face a conviction. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, 
Isn't it amazing how legacy media has nothing to say when you intentionally take out all of the times that they have things to say? Um, yeah, there, there, there's, there's a lot uh, to talk about with maliciously editing a piece so that it says something different to what the author intended, but this particular choice speaks volumes to me as to what Team Stafery did with this clip. Because um, Russell could have included the entire piece, right? He could have included Trump getting the name Obama mixed up, and by the way, happens a lot, and there are some fun supercuts out there of him doing exactly that. Happens way more than I realized it did. Um, Russell could have included that anyway, that little clip there, as well as the parts about Trump wanting to ensure he has total immunity from prosecution if he ever regains the presidency, um, and Russell could have tackled these and mocked and hand-waved them away. That's, that's his usual tactic, but in this case... Like, the evidence must be considered too substantive to simply wave to the side. Like, it's too damaging to his audience's perception of Trump, and it's too damaging for Russell supporting Trump for him to air the full clip. Like, this is the first time I recall seeing Russell too scared to show something to his audience, and that is fascinating to me. I mean, um, the argument can be made that it's shorter... Because sure, uh, you know, whatever but, you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I, like, I don't know. I, I feel I feel like he's he's got plenty of space on this show. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's doing some talking. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> well, also like that might be an antiquated notion that we need to maybe get a little more out of these clips there. But because yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, if you're like, I I I I I don't have much love for M MSNBC's approach either. No, no, it's I've fair. noticed it's very annoying. often it's that yeah they can be real smug fucks like that and yeah. th there's no use to that. Um, I did also identify with her instinct, and if you weren't watching, uh, to see that the female um, anchor. Yeah. Thank you, anchor. Um, mm -hmm. she, <laughs> she has a little legal pad, and everybody was talking, and then she's like, "I'm gonna make a chart," and she wrote, yes. she like drew lines, <laughs> and yeah, then yeah, she was also like, "Oh, we're not going anywhere either." all right and then got her coffee <laughs> she was like yeah. let's get down to it because she actually wanted to talk about the issue at hand and her, and yeah, it was yeah. more kind of like yeah i'm not i don't like joe either you know what i mean like it's it yeah and I, it is the thing is is i i i can't even necessarily i mean it's it's all so uh, amorphic like riffing right like it's so much riffing I don't even know if Trump is getting the name wrong because Trump just kind of goes wherever Trump's going to go. And Trump has yeah. very publicly hated Obama for like and used Obama as this like monster, you know, like yeah, has built yeah. up well, Obama. Well, I'm not even, not even necessarily concerned so much about that yeah. as I am the other stuff that he said. Like yeah, yes yeah no no uh, the, the 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 immunity from prosecution thing um yeah yeah e even when crossing the line which yeah. he did tweet out they they showed the tweet on the thing um yeah. yeah that that is that is much more much more concerning than the senility um that is fairly obviously occurring yeah. um because yeah presidents like, like shouldn't I said, be immune from getting convicted of crimes that they committed no that's how you get dictators um, that's what I'm saying uh, let's talk about that part let's just focus <laughs> yeah. on that and let's talk about that yeah can we talk that, about that that's 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 the big a problem there My um, but yeah it, it, it crazy is, i know it is interesting to me that the that the senility kind of part was also removed um you know and and um because it, it shows a very clear editorial decision um from russell to, to no 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 we're gonna paint joe biden as the old one who forgets everything and mixes names up and we're gonna paint trump as the funny clever charismatic one on a stage mm -hmm. that's what we're gonna do um and, yeah to and even cut are. it out from the other side to like make yeah. that very concise yeah misdirect Ex yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. exactly and the, the, I'm on board the other with your thing assessment. that's slightly baffling um is that you know rather than go through all this work he could have just not covered this like the world would be none the wiser no one in his audience would give a single shit like the only reason i can think of to air this is to try and silence critics like me who say that russell only ever covers one side of an issue in earnest um and if that is the reason he aired it if that was the intention uh russell you did a bad job and you made it worse. Uh. Well, also, I think that MSNBC is shorthand. You know, it's like shorthand for a yeah. liberal media complex. Like, that's yeah, what I yeah, mean yeah, for yeah. 
the MAGA base. Like that's just that's oh, a uh, uh, that was that was. I mean, that was b before they even started talking. Yeah. That was in his introduction, wasn't it? You know, yeah. star oh, supercilious and haughty and blah 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 blah. Okay, buddy. Okay. Yeah. Oh dear. Um, now we we have another unusual thing happen in today's show, and it's normally preceded by a jarring bleep. But today we get a live on air ad read. You may be wondering, aside from my haircut, what is it that's keeping me looking so vital, young, and wide awake? Could it be these Black Forest supplements, NMNs? These are a kind of derivative B vitamin. They play genes. a vital role in energy production. And I'm packing, baby, muscle regeneration. And I'm getting ready for pull-up competitions. Metabolism, you got to metabolize. And gene expression in the body. What do they do, these NMNs, I hear you ask? Not literally. And I know you're not saying M&M &M because, you know, like a head trip to listen to all that stuff. It replenishes the declining NAD plus levels, which drop around 1% a year, meaning if you're 50, half your youthful levels of NAD plus have vanquished, perished, been gone. So listen, I take these things to give, make myself feel a little bit more vital. Mm. A little more amped up. Take yeah, pull-up competition, yeah. 33 Geo. I was going to do one with uh, Bobby Kennedy, and it may yet happen, please God. Since I've been taking these things, I Stop. reckon it's given me an extra rep or two, plus I think I'm drinking less coffee, plus I'm feeling more awake, plus I'm feeling vitalized. Now, listen, we can get you a deal on these things, in spite of the fact that Big Pharma are trying to shut it down. They want NMN to be sort of regulated in a different way and registered as a Big Pharma kind of drug rather than as a supplement. You want to try it? Do you want to try it? It's uh, good for anti-aging. And for the next 48 hours, you can get 25% off if you go to blackforestsupplements.com forward slash Russell. Okay, so there's a link in the description. Post it now. Post it even on YouTube. I'm using this stuff and it's really working. And the geezer I do BJJ with, my teacher, Chris Clear, he says he's getting reps out of it. We're all doing it in the BJJ community. And uh, I'm telling you now, some of them chokes are getting proper deadly. You know what's just occurred to me is that his... Um... His promo code is is always like it'll always be the link, and then at the end it'll be Russell. And what's just occurred to me is how many of his audience spell his name incorrectly. Uh, oh, <laughs> they they, I they, mean, they I... all. It's either you're, it's either you're bringing missing... this observation to the table because none yes, of us yeah, are yeah. aware. <laughs> yes, no, no, no. Sure, no. Sure. Yeah, they, they, they almost uh, either one L or one S. Um, yeah, they, in, invariably, which is sadder, but yes, yeah, they, they, the, the, most of them will spell his name incorrectly. So I, I have to wonder just Fast how many missed man, sales. What are you gonna do? Yeah, well, I wonder how many missed sales he's getting just from that. You know, <laughs> make make it like stay free. Make it something really easy. You know, <laughs> Apple. Yeah, you know, <laughs> just something. I... Um, instead of instead of your name you that people spell misspell constantly, Russell, I don't know if any amendments. Well, are the thing is, you can you can spell it you can spell it with one L. That is a valid sure, spelling. Sure, 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 lots sure, sure, of sure. lots of people yeah, just assume right. that it's the one L. Um, but no, he's 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 got double doubles. Um, and, but that uh, also yeah, means he's... branding. Like that's that's a that's branding, and yeah, it is behind yeah. him. Oh, I, all of the excuses I'm making in my head are not holding up. They're being not. Very generous. You're being I'm very stop. generous. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, <laughs> um, that's the yeah. That just occurred to me while the clip was playing. Um, so yeah, taking supplements on air. Uh, wonder where we've seen that before. Yeah. Not a great look, but okay, whatever. It's a move. That's it's a move. It's a move. Um, here, Russell is selling some overpriced Black Forest capsules of NMN, 60 capsules for just shy of $100. Um, these are, by the way, the same people who tried to get the Merseyside skeptics to advertise their product, which did not go well. Um, <laughs> uh, so what is NMN? Um, well, this is from Forbes. Uh, quote, NMN is a naturally occurring molecule that, chemically speaking, classifies as a bioactive nucleotide. It's a pre Precursor of uh, nicotinamide, adenine dinucleotide, NAD, um, and a driving force in the body's production of NAD, which is an essential coenzyme involved in multiple biological processes, including aging and gene expression. Uh, NAD plus is involved in turning the food we eat into energy for our cells, explains Catherine Piper, a registered and licensed dietitian nutritionist in the states of Missouri and Illinois. Uh, it also helps enzymes that repair DNA and prevent damage to our cells. An NAD deficiency, NAD plus deficiency can lead to potential health issues, including age-related metabolic disorders, mental disorders, and neuro 
degenerative diseases. NMN appears in small amounts in various animal and plant food sources, including broccoli, avocados, and cucumbers. Okay, then. Russell says Big Pharma are trying to make it a pharma-type drug so they can make money off it, whereas actually what happened is the FDA had already classified NMN as being authorized for investigation as a new drug when a company in 2022 tried to register it as a new ingredient in a dietary supplement. Basically, they said, oh no, we, we don't know enough about this yet, and it could be pharmacological in nature, so you, you just have to wait a minute um, so we can look into this. And since NMN's authorized investigation as a new drug happened before it was lawfully marketed as a dietary supplement, the FDA concluded that it should be excluded from the dietary supplement category until further notice. As the official FDA ruling. Of course, that hasn't stopped a whole fuckload of places from selling it, and you can get it basically anywhere. Mm. Um, because, because the FDA is uh, a little toothless, it turns out. Um, so... What evidence is there that NMN works like Russell says it does? You might be wondering. Have there been extensive human trials? Well, I'm not wondering that much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, but I'll buy. There, 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 are, there, <laughs> there are some small scale human trials going on right now, uh, but the results aren't in yet. And even when they are fully, they will be far from conclusive. Um, so weird, right? So how, how have these claims that Russell's making been substantiated at all? Oh, that's right. It's by testing in mice. That creature that Russell says we can't possibly test any COVID-related drugs or vaccines on because mice aren't humans. But oh, a supplement you're supposed to take every single day from now until you die is completely fine. And spend uh, $100 on a bottle. Uh -huh. Yeah, and these are big pills as well, a thousand milligrams, right? But but no, we, we can test those ones on the mice, and, and that's supposed to count as plenty of evidence of anti-aging and whatever the fuck else, so go give him money, I guess. <laughs> I in mice that. is the thing. In mice! In in mice, in my, well, they, this in is mice. it, right? It's 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 painfully transparent, hypocritical bullshit, purely yeah. in service of profit, and that is it. There is no point here from this man, no values he has to fall back on. It all shifts with the sands of whatever's making him money at the time, and that is fucking it. Yeah. <laughs> like we're not mice. Does it like? No, no, we're not, we're we're not really mice. Not. It's 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 true. It's true. Um, and you know, if his message was in any way consistent, then we can have a discussion on that. But nope. <laughs> but no, right. that's the only that's the only way yeah. these things he's selling have been tested. So there we go. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and he's just choking them down. Loves them every day, apparently. And the BJJ community. Um. Okay. Sure. Oh dear. Um. I do, I, I do at some point, this is a complete aside, but I do at some point want to do like a little mini investigation into Brazilian jiu-jitsu and like why it seems to appeal so strongly to a particular subset of um, of, of very masculine kind of presenting men. I, 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 it's, I know it's a, a little mm. bit and I, mm. Mm, it's not. Mm, okay. Because okay. jiu-jitsu maybe, maybe and is Bra Brazilian jiu-jitsu, yeah. 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 I know yeah. a little and I'd like to get my t's crossing my eye because i only know what i've heard okay okay we'll, 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 we'll avoid we'll avoid Didn't talking off the cuff for now the, yes the yeah Brazil no, it's, Brazilian it's, it's, so, moment. it's something that's bothered me it's for a while good. obviously it's it's it's, it's a big thing that rogan's not, into you know it's it's a whole it's a whole thing i don't I, like there are um, foreign policy implications actually it's really not great yeah. Really? Okay, yeah. that's interesting. No, we should talk about it right. later. Yeah, pin in that. Right. Pin in that for some other time. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's not good. Uh, so we're, we're going to move on from the ad, and we are finally going to get to Soros. Hey, listen, guys. Uh, so let me know. Take advantage of the 25% off. Post the link in the description. Give it over on uh, the, the locals chat as well. Listen, have you seen that our man, Alex Soros, child of George Soros, has been cited with the Irish PM. Even though people tell you there's no such thing Jesus. as globalism, here is the son of George Soros appearing. This, wait, what, what was that on, number 12? Let me see that. Here he is. This is a Schellenberger tweet. The idea that George Soros controls politicians around the world is an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory in the media. 
But it's not a theory. Here's his son, Alex, with Ireland's Prime Minister, who is at this moment seeking Jesus. to seize control over the entire internet through hate speech legislation. Visit Alex Soros's X.com account, and it's full of pictures of him with politicians from around the world. Why does he post them? Because he wants to advertise his power over them. George Soros was the largest donor to the Democrats <laughs> in 2022, one of the largest donors to Biden, and one of the largest donors to various NGO efforts demanding censorship around the world, including Media Matters. Alex today controls his father's political operation interesting let me know what you guys think about that fan lobbying that's it um yeah fan um, lobbying done that, that right there is the extent of the soros coverage on this show uh <laughs> That's that's the that's the that's the bombshell <laughs> reporting from 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 Davos. It's it's Michael Schellenberger um tweeting. Uh, it's about looking something. at a tweet that's a tweet that says, "Look at this thing." Yep, a hundred percent. Sh okay. Schellenberger's no Schellenberger's nowhere near Davos. He's he's not there. He's 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 no. never been there. It's I mean Bear for a start. It's, it, yeah, for, for 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 a start, it's nineteen thousand for a ticket. So he's definitely not there. Um. Anyway. Uh. Yeah. Again, it's it's Tisha. Um, for, to to both of you, Russell Schellenberger. That's 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 the word. Fucking Alex Soros got it right in his tweet. You could see that he spelt it correctly and everything. Anyway, what the hell is Schellenberger rattling on about now? Well, it concerns Alex Soros, son of George Soros, and uh, Alex Soros now runs the twenty five billion dollar Open Society Foundations as of June last year. Right. George Soros has been an alt-right boogeyman for some time now, um, and Alex Soros is often considered worse by many of those people for the reason that, well, he's younger at the age of 38, and um, in Alex's, uh, Alex Soros's own words, he is more political. Um, he's insisted the foundation will be championing its support for voting and abortion rights in particular in the coming years. Good. Great. Um, open Society Foundations have their tagline as, quote, the Open Society Foundations work to build vibrant and inclusive democracies whose governments are accountable to their people, unquote. Um, now, this is a big year to be taken on that kind of mission, right? With, with a focus on encouraging people to vote and trying to get across the message that elections matter. Because there are elections happening this year that affect 4.2 billion people in the world. Which is insane. Um, it's 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 historic. Um, the the number of elections that are happening this year. So you've got elections in Mexico, India, Indonesia, Canada, the UK, the US, Uruguay, Venezuela, Russia, Spain, dozens more countries there, right? Um, as well as elections to the European Parliament as well, which is a whole other fucking mess. God, this is gonna uh, suck. It's gonna be an interesting fucking year. <laughs> interesting year. Oh. Um, <laughs> I yeah, I'm 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 quietly hoping that nothing too insane happens. But you really just do uh, not know how? these days. How could you yeah, think that? I know. What? I, I'm, I said hoping, hoping. Um, <laughs> um, uh. So wh why would Schellenberger and the cabal of alt right shitheads not like this guy or the Open Society Foundations? Well, Soros is pretty left wing, um, and. It really is that simple. Um, he's he's got a lot of money to be able to support and fund left wing political aims, and that makes him an immediate target um, of the of the right. Uh, the OSF has been a major financial supporter of U.S. immigration reform, including establishing a pathway to citizenship for undocumented immigrants. Um, they've supported uh, the Organization for Black Struggle, uh, done research on drug reform, and uh, provided funding for university courses, programs, and research to serve neglected student populations worldwide including uh, also... Ron DeSantis did we cover that oh no 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 yeah yeah, yeah. No. Ron DeSantis is one of the students that was facilitated through a Soros program <laughs> oh I see I didn't know that oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh dear um yeah there, there's there's a bunch more um bunch more things that they do um like their, their funding analysis of global issues uh like fueling violence climate injustice and economic in uh, inequality that kind of thing um but suffice to say all of the things that they're doing are against the right wing playbook, right? And that really is it. There's there's no great conspiracy. There's no great control being exerted over politicians or the world. He's not trying to fucking censor anybody. He's not got any big plans to shut down the internet and all of this stuff. It's money and influence. And well, research. he does have. Yeah, he has outsized influence because of sure. money. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. that buys power. We can, and if, one yeah. might even be able to level an accusation against the open society, ignoring the fact that 
but they want to work within mm -hmm. a system. They don't want to tear one down. And while I don't think that's a good idea and that's not what I would spend my energy doing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I had that same, but also I understand why they don't want to undo the path that they think they have access through lobbying. I say ban lobbying full stop. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the kind of, a lot um, of other problems would be fixed. Yes, no, absolutely. I, I completely agree. Yeah. Um, a lot of the things like the, the, the lobbying is one side of the coin. Um, supporting NGOs is the other. And, and that's, um, that's, that's Schellenberger's problem here is like always funding NGOs who are, who are trying to censor and uh, censor and shut people down on the internet. It's like, well, no, they're trying to stop disinformation. Right. Like, right, you. right, right, right. right. Um, oh, that's, absolutely. that's why, yeah, yeah. And that's, um, I, there are things that I assume that are grant, you know, that's taken yeah, as yeah, read yeah. that I'm not necessarily addressing. I completely agree with that. But I also no, no, just no, think that we're, we're pitting NGOs against the government rather than um, – because that's essentially yeah, that's what the, ends up the, happening. The, yeah, it's the wrong way to go about it. Um, it is the wrong way to go about it. And it's an incredible amount of waste, and there's a lot of money that are put in pockets that shouldn't be, be through NGOs and through quote-unquote charity. That's not good, mm -hmm. but it's not what – if I could just hear Russell say ban lobbying, what? One time, or Schellenberger, it would be, it would be, uh, or or fucking Taibi, <laughs> or uh, or Lee Fang. Um, well, I can't yeah, speak of, to their any, content. Any I people. see Russell every week. It's it's all the same. <laughs> It's all. I mean? It's all. It all. It all matches the exact same narrative that we see. Can't on speak to that. Show. I can speak um, to this. It's, it's, say yeah, it. No, completely fair. Um, but yeah, it's it's all money and influence and research, right? That's 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 primarily what Alex Soros wields. Right. Um, but what is it that Schellenberger said? Right, I'm going to read out that tweet again. Uh, so. The idea that George Soros controls politicians around the world is an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory, insists the media. But it's not a theory. Here's his son Alex with Ireland's Prime Minister, who is at this moment seeking to seize control over the entire internet through hate speech legislation. Bold fucking claim. Visit Alex Soros's X account, and it's full of pictures of him with politicians from around the world. Why does he post them? Because he wants to advertise his power over them. George Soros was the largest donor to Democrats in 2022, one of the largest donors to Biden, and one of the largest donors to various NGO efforts demanding censorship around the world, including Media Matters. Alex today controls his father's political operation. That's what Schellenberger has to say there. Yes, it's um, yeah, he's he's advertising his power over all these politicians. That's what he's doing. Not not that you know they had a conversation while at the WEF, you know, fucking thing in Davos, and and snapped a pic and were like, oh yeah, it was good to actually you know agree on some things. Maybe that it's not possible that that happened. No, no, no. He takes a picture with them, posts it and is like, ha, see, this one is mine right before he, I don't know, menacingly spins a dreidel or something. Well, like, um, it's, that's just like, you're a uh, sir again, sir, please. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schellenberger Esquire, right? Like uh, mm -hmm. you're assigning, like you're, you're making leaps. That's also a leap to assign oh, yeah. and determine someone's motivation. It's a when huge it can leap. be so much simpler than that. Ban lobbying, and also yes. these fucking. Yeah, yeah. What are they getting done? I mean, genuinely, all this like COP twenty whatever and the Davos and all this kind of shit. Like, mm. I'm disgusted with the results of all of this quote unquote climate talk and you know all these like foreign policy we're all working shit out obviously what y'all are doing is not working so everybody yes, just like yeah. glad handing and taking pictures with each other i'm also grossed out but i'm not I, i'm i'm <laughs> that's not the right position to take if you want something to change and if you want the power of the people to have any say in the way that these things are run so yeah like it's just it's it's Come on, man. Yeah, I, I, I don't dis I don't disagree when you've got a collection of um, you know, the richest people in the world and the most powerful people in the world, you know, they 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 telling it's us be a that little... we gotta recycle and flying their fucking private jets all over the place. Yeah, it's, it, it's, dog. it's it's gonna be a little gross. Um, yeah, I I agree. I I've 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 seen a couple. I've watched a couple of the conversations, a couple of the videos that have come out of um, 
come out of this, but only the ones containing Alex Soros so far, um, you know, and, and there were interesting discussions around voting and disinformation and that kind of thing that are relevant to our field. Oh, absolutely. Um, but, absolutely. But, um, but in in general, yes, there are huge fucking problems surrounding a lot of it. And there are, there are very legitimate critiques, um, as always. There are very legitimate critiques to be leveled at this and at these people and at the whole thing. And, you know, the concept of billionaires from the very are start unethical. should be... Exactly. There is Full no stop. such thing as an ethical fucking billionaire. Exactly. Um, and, yeah, that's, and that's the only and reason I bring so it up there, because there, this is just me so off many... the cuff. And I know yeah, enough to are... say something that actually like, like, uh, I know enough to know that uh, he's misdirecting from the objective that we should be aiming at which is yeah yeah see see what what, what you're confronted with is politics. that michael michael schellenberger does not want to get rid of billionaires he doesn't want to get rid of lobbying he doesn't want to get rid of any of those things he just wants to get rid of those on the left he wants to get rid of left-wing billionaires he wants to get rid of left-wing lobbyists that's what he wants he wants to keep his ones and get rid of all the ones he doesn't like uh, that's why he's I taking don't issue really with think alex he wants Soros. to do that because yeah. then who would he bitch about <laughs> He'll like, find someone. He'll, he'll you know, find. He'll find. He'll find someone else who maybe just so happens sure. to be Jewish. Um. Anyway. Uh. Because. Is, because yeah, there, was, there was a lot in that. Yeah. I'm. I'm. Yeah. I keep going through the tweet, man. I'm like, geez, Pete. Yeah. 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 yeah right. It's. It's a lot. Um. So be, because he's a big funder, it means that he owns all of these people. Um. <laughs> okay. That's... If we were to do the same thing with Trump, who Trump is uh, owned by, we'd be having to demonize Timothy Mellon of Pan Am Railways. Um, or maybe Linda McMahon, for instance. Okay. Um, but it's just it's just not as exciting as playing with anti-Semitism now, is it? Though Linda McMahon, that's a whole fucking I was saying, barrel I don't know. of snakes. I think but... the examining the <laughs> McMahons is yeah. very yeah. exciting and extremely yeah, they're, they're, damning. The, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, McMahon, yeah. the McMahons are an interesting example of Whew. just human life full stop. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, In just, the cabinet, just... dog. Oh, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have I, a podcast I, to say that into when it was happening. Yes, <laughs> so it was a yeah. little mini catharsis yeah. I just got to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is That's... it terribly shocking that she was the fourth biggest donor to Trump and then ended up on the cabinet? Is that surprising to anyone? Um, mm -hmm. Maybe, right. maybe. I, right. I, I, I think I think that's more of a problem than, than someone like Alex Soros, personally. But well, meh, meh. I think it's a uh, problem across the board. You shouldn't be able to purchase yeah. your way into government and exactly. then enrich yourself, exactly. period. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and, and if, if, yeah, had Alex Soros done that, I'd be taking the same fucking issue with him, but, uh, nope, not, not what's occurred. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. in the next clip, in the next clip, we finally get to the thing that Russell is using to sell his locals channel. And, but before we get into it properly, we do get an example of Russell's little conditioning method, uh, at work. We're going to show you a little clip of the exclusive video that's only available for our Awakened Wonder community on Locals. We reported on the tragic fact that there's been an 8% increase in excess deaths of children in the last couple of years. Probably began around uh, 2020, around that time. Let me know in the chat what could have happened around that era that potentially could have contributed and should at least be investigated. Click the link in the description. Join us over on Rumble now. Okay, guys, let's, uh, should we, should we going to show a clip of that? I've not even seen this myself. I'm excited to see it. This is exclusively available for people like Claude, Ashella, True Chimera, the supporters of our work over on Locals. So, uh, yeah, become one of our supporters, would you? I see that Laura, Lucy Lee, Jazzy Joe, they're already there. You guys can see it straight away. We'll do a bit of additional content, Rumble viewers, on Locals tonight, but it will be free for you. So we'll post the link in the description and you can join us for more information. Jennifer980, COVID shot. What has made you so cynical? What has done this to you? What indeed? What could have possibly drawn her to the conclusion that an 8% rise in child deaths in the UK is because of the COVID-19 vaccine? He hasn't even shown the content yet, and his audience, they've already fucking got it. Already got it right out of the back. He said 2020. You know, he said when 2020. were children being vaccinated? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What? 20, uh, tw tw when did 21, that roll out? Two, 2021. Two. I, 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 it, was, it was a while before it was, it was late. available to kids. It was yeah, late yeah. before it was available to kids. It was at yeah. least the middle of 2021, if I'm recalling <clears throat> correctly. And that's yeah. also over here. I don't know. Yeah. 
Uh, um, on his face. What? Yeah. Y yes. Yeah, I, I kind of saw you kind of go static for a minute there. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck is this? And that is the correct response to have. And yeah, th there's a fair bit to say. So l let's get into the little preview that Russell is willing to show the Rumble channel. Let's have a look at our report on an excess death. Remember, this is only available to our locals community in full. Let's check it. There's been an 8% increase in excess deaths in children in the UK. But as a consultant paediatrician, I'd like to focus on children. The Child Mortality Database, National Child Mortality Database, collates data regarding children's deaths from 0 to 18. Their latest bulletin from March 23 shows there were sadly 3,743 child deaths to the end of March 23, which is an increase of 8% on the previous year. So could the minister con comment on her investiga or investigation she's doing into the cause of this increased mortality and what's being done to prevent further deaths? Of course, do your own research is already being used as a kind of pro-conspiracy theorist attack line. But I would say this, notice now how this story has been covered in legacy media and mainstream media. Have a look and see, for example, if there are documentaries about excess or sudden deaths that don't mention potential radical changes of the last few years and what is implied by the omission of those significant medical interventions of the last few years. Luckily, we have access to some reliable sources of information that we will be using throughout this video. And of course, as always, while on this platform, we studiously maintain that we are making no definitive claims about what's <laughs> causing these deaths. How could you? Stay free. See it first on Rumble. Yeah, uh, they make no definitive claims, so they are legally protected. Um, but also, there is a reason that this editorial is exclusive to Russell's Locals channel, and it's not just to sell subscriptions. Um, obviously, the thing is paywalled, so I can't get at it properly right now, but there is a description that I'm able to read. It says, This week, Dr. John Campbell highlights the concerning rise in excess deaths among children. Additionally, more pharmaceutical companies are investing in turbo cancers, Meanwhile, the WHO and Bill get it's a, it's an anti-vax conspiracy cancers? theory. Anti-vax conspiracy oh, theory. We might boy. deal with it down the line. Yeah, it's new. It's fun. Uh, mean, <laughs> meanwhile, the WHO and Bill Gates address the importance of vaccines in tackling disease X at Davos. Um, now, most of that not particularly interested in. Um, it's all anti-vax alarmist bullshit. But the part about the excess deaths in children that struck me a particular way, especially as Dr. John Campbell has been a repeat guest on Stay Free with Russell Brand, and, well, I'm not a particularly hateful person, Lauren, you know me well enough to know that, I think, but this guy, John Campbell, I fucking hate him. I like, mean, the second, the second I out, even but see, do your thing. For, for me, oh my, I've seen, I've seen too much of him. Um, the second I even fucking see his face, I am already internally in a blind rage. Um, well, let for, us for know lack, why we, we mm, can agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. will see, you will see. Uh, for lack of bias's sake, um, I, I will read to you from the Wikipedia page as to who this guy is, rather than just giving you my unfiltered, uh, rage. Um, so... John Lorimer Campbell is an English YouTuber and retired nurse educator known for his videos about the COVID-19 pandemic. Initially, the videos received praise, but they later veered into misinformation. He has been criticized for suggesting COVID-19 deaths have been overcounted, repeating false claims about the use of ivermectin as a COVID-19 treatment, and providing misleading commentary about the safety of COVID-19 vaccines. He currently has over 3 million YouTube subscribers, and his videos have been viewed at least 716 million times. Accordingly, we are going to take a little diversion to look at this guy's coverage of child deaths in the UK, especially as that's what Russell is using. Um, so Russell also got the year wrong, because she said in the previous year... So she was talking about 2022, 2023. 2020, yes, it, it's and one that... And he said 2020 just because... Uh, he said 2020 to, to, to kind of highlight, um, basically to, to insinuate to his audience, right, oh, right, this, right, is right. A, this, is, this is a vaccine thing. Um, okay. yeah. yeah. One thing I would like to point out about this guy, uh, John Campbell, is that he holds a diploma in nursing from the University of London, a BSc in biology from the Open University, an MSc in health science from the University of Lancaster, and a PhD in nursing from the University of Bolton. So 
Dr. John Campbell is accurate, but doctor of medicine he is not. He received the PhD for his work on developing methods of teaching via digital media such oh. as online videos. Oh. Mm. Well. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, so, I mean, he's, you know, he's got a degree in biology, that's true, um, and, and an MSc in health science. It's, it's probably fair to say in some areas the man knows what he's talking about, but he's also not been through the incredibly rigorous process of becoming a medical doctor. It takes a minimum of seven years to even reach the foundational level of knowledge required to become a doctor in the UK, and from there you have to specialize or become a general practitioner, which can take between three and seven years on mm -hmm. top of of the seven years you've already done. Optimistically, in his education, he's racked up about eight years of experience there, um, but most of that you know, is, is in biology, which is related, but also very much not medicine, um, hence them being two separate disciplines, um, or his PhD in nursing, which was actually much more about education than anything else. Uh, so, yeah, that's this guy. Um, and uh, yeah, as, as 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 while I think of it, the the year thing, the twenty twenty two twenty three thing, mm -hmm. a frequent thing that this John Campbell guy says is, oh, the you know, these are supposed to be the years for the, the the numbers for this year, but they're using numbers from that year, and that brings up the average and blah blah blah. All it is 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 the period of a year that that goes across, you know, twenty twenty two slash twenty. So it's you know June to to June. 2022 to 2023 and he's like oh well you're using numbers from both years that means that you're doing the numbers aren't right you're 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 inflating things did or, you, you look know. in the like any more into the clip that they played that what the woman was saying because we're about to she... take a look okay we're about all to right. take a look. all right don't that's worry. where i'm like ah! don't worry i'm <laughs> okay. i'm uh yeah we, we are we are on a little side quest here um so so what Russell will usually do in these instances is take the content that someone's made and then provide his own commentary over the top of it, right? Yeah. Um, in this case, because it's behind a paywall, we will have to skip Russell's commentary, though he's already made it abundantly clear which direction he goes with it. Um, and we're going to go straight to the source. So here is an initial clip from John Campbell's YouTube page, and I haven't edited anything. This is just how it opens. You are most welcome. Now, I'd like to play you a clip from yesterday's uh, parliamentary debate on excess deaths. Now, this is from Dr. Uh, Caroline Johnson. She's the Member of Parliament for Sleaford and North uh, Hakingham. Now, the interesting thing here is that this is actually a, a Conservative politician. And the critique she's making, of course, is of her own government. Her, her Conservative Party is in power, which makes it, uh, to my mind, a, a more poignant contribution. Let's get to the contribution now. But as a consultant paediatrician, I'd like to focus on children. The Child Mortality Database, National Child Mortality Database, collates data regarding children's deaths from 0 to 18. Their latest bulletin from March 23 shows there were sadly 3,743 child deaths to the end of March 23, which is an increase of 8% on the previous year. So could the Minister con comment on her investiga or investigation she's doing into the cause of this increased mortality and what's being done to prevent further deaths? The purpose of CEDOP is to investigate these deaths, but the average investigation is taking 392 days, with less than half completed within 12 months and a significant fall in the number being completed in 12 months. Can I ask what she's doing to improve this uh, process? Um, one particularly distressing feature of child death data is that suicide or deliberate self-harm was the primary cause of death between children of between 10 and 17 years. Looking for the data, it's getting um, much worse That's within true. children 10, 10 to 14. I understand That's the government's true. aware of these figures and is investing in mental health for children and improving online safety, but we're grateful if the Minister could elaborate further on the steps they're taking to support children and prevent further tragedies. One of the reasons I get exasperated... Sorry, I'm finishing this. One of the reasons I get exasperated with the COVID inquiry is there seems too much focus on who said what to whom. Did someone swear? Did the actors like each other? I'm not that interested. I want to know what lessons can be learned. Was lockdown useful? Is getting children out of school useful? Was the vaccine a suitable thing to give children or not? Particularly if they'd had uh, COVID before. These Thank are the you. answers that we need. <clears throat> oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Doing so well. Went. Doing so well. And then... Silence. 
Unfortunately, being a consultant pediatrician and a member of parliament does not in fact safeguard you from being an idiot. Um, this lady may be a doctor, but she's peddling anti-vax narratives here, insinuating that the child death rate has increased by 8% compared to last year because, oh, we vaccinated all these children and it's killed a bunch of them. Uh, which is exactly why John Campbell has picked this up, and it's exactly why Russell has picked this up. It fits the narrative perfectly. Uh, these figures were reported back in November of 2023, and um, it took a minute for this MP to pick them up, which has then taken forever for these two idiots to parrot out into the ether. Uh, if either of them genuinely gave a shit, they could have found this back in November, but of course they had no clue and no one had spun the narrative yet. Um, now, a steep rise in children dying is particularly scary, which again, perfect anti-vax content, but why exactly has that occurred? Right. Evidence does actually point to one specific reason for the most part, and I will tell you now, it's not vaccines. Uh, the first thing to address uh, is that use of percentages again. 8% uh, increase in death sounds fucking terrifying, and it is. Um, but realistically, the figure uh, of child deaths went from 3,454 in 21-22 uh, to 3,743. Um, in 2223. Uh, so there were circa 300 more child deaths this year compared to last year. Still awful, but nowhere near as scary as they're making it sound. <sighs> For black children, the death rate was more than double that of white children at 56.6 mm. per 100,000 compared with 25 per 100,000. Uh, the infant death rate was highest for infants of black or black British ethnicity, 8.7 per 1,000 live births, uh, approximately three times the rate of infants of white ethnicity. According to the report, 15% of children who died last year were known to social services at the time of their death, with 42% of the 496 deaths reviewed considered avoidable. Um, the director of the NCMD and professor of neonatal medicine at the University of Bristol, Professor Karen Lloyd, said infant mortality was a standard by which countries judge the state of their healthcare, and in most high-income countries, the figures were improving, unlike England. Uh, she said there were many I different do factors. Here. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know, to be honest. Um, she, she said there were many different factors behind England's figures, uh, but increasing deprivation since the pandemic was one of the main reasons. Uh, Professor Lloyd added, uh, most infant deaths are due to prematurity, and we know people who live in social deprivation are at higher risks of premature births. There is also evidence that women from ethnic minorities do not always feel as welcome in the health service, and capacity and resources in healthcare services are also constrained. The report said, quote, Whilst the death rate in the least deprived neighbourhoods decreased slightly from the previous year, the death rate for the most deprived areas continued to rise, demonstrating widening inequalities. Mm. Um, right, So fewer children in rich areas are dying, more children in poor areas are dying. Yeah. One particularly poignant statistic uh, is that the death rates in the poorest areas were more than twice as high as in the richest areas. Um, and where, oh, where do all of those people of colour live, I wonder? Uh, the UK's uh, top children's doctor, Dr Camilla Kingdon, president of the Royal College of Pediatrics and Child Health, uh, had this to say, quote, uh, this is a harrowing but avoidable statistic. Behind this awful data published today is a whole raft of deteriorating child health outcomes, and the clear driver is rising child poverty in the UK. Poverty health inequalities and the associated loss of life is not inevitable. Poverty is a political choice and our government has had ample opportunity to tackle it. If our government wants to get serious about health, then it must also get serious about poverty and inequality. Figures such as these in a nation as rich as ours are unforgivable." Unquote. Hard fucking agree. And here is where it becomes incredibly notable to me that the woman letting anti-vax conspiracy theories fall out of her mouth uncontrollably is a conservative MP. If it's all the fault of the vaccines, then it couldn't possibly be the fault and result of the austerity measures that her party have put in place for the last 14 fucking years. Mm. And this specifically is where I start to get really fucking angry with people like John Campbell and Russell Brand, because in their insistence on the lie that these child death rates 
are being caused by the vaccine. Not only are they actively causing harm by being anti-vax, but they are obfuscating and diminishing the reality that children are dying in this country because our government is choosing to let them die. Because they are poor, or black, or brown, and we're unlikely to vote Tory, so what the fuck does it matter anyway, right? And Russell and this fuckhead Campbell hide the truth for these unscrupulous cunts in the UK government for the sake of making money. Uh -huh. This is nothing short of weaponizing the deaths of children for profit while actively covering up the real reason that those children are dying. It's disgusting, it's abhorrent, and it's fucking shameful. Yeah, I completely <sighs> agree. And yeah, yeah. it's it's uh, it's... Literally off. The thing is, this this should be one of those moments where EU, UK, everybody just points over across the pond and is like, we don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> we don't do what America's doing. Because, yeah, the yeah. numbers for, I mean, maternal, um, I mean, the numbers for black and brown pregnant women and is are abysmal like the just yeah, the success yeah. rates are this the disparity is staggering yeah. um maternity in general is getting more dangerous in this country yeah it's a really great gauge of how the government is protecting and treating its citizens and how it's spending Damn. its fucking money it's mm -hmm. reprehensible this is something that's been happening in america for quite some time so yes yeah, yeah. um and has been on a pretty uh disgusting pr trajectory for quite some time yeah yeah i i like i said i don't know the specific numbers because i've been i've been purely looking at the uk but yeah i know it's been a big fucking issue for a long time yeah um you know and, and we and, know why and, and it's, a, it's yeah. the reasons that you just listed so mm. especially like her conflating um you know unaliving numbers with ch like children it does also feel obfuscated if this is the kind of information that you can you can find mm. that even like <sighs> mental health resources are also a thing. It, it, what, what's the point of relitigating what lockdown already did other yeah, than to yeah. further distract the conversation? That's something yes. that happens here too. It's like, oh, well, all of these mass shootings and these young men, their mental health problems. Like, okay, but y'all don't support the mental health system either yeah yeah ex exactly it's, it's it's like well pick a lane do do exactly do one, do one do one thing or the other um yeah yeah and um i mean yeah the, the she was she was right um in that the leading cause you know from 10 to 17 uh the ages 10 to 17 is is yeah is is unfortunately suicide um and and That's it's on the fucked. rise and it's it's a oh. fucking problem um yeah they're 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 the majority of the, of those um you know nearly 4000 child deaths are either either that they're either suicide between between that age group particularly the ages 14 to 17 that's that's where it is most prevalent um 10 to 14 it is on the rise she was correct about that as well um and then uh, the lion's share of the rest of them were actually like um perinatal um right. you know, situations um you know when when the child is um yeah, not even born yet, or or is very very young. Um, you know that's um, that's that's the other huge <laughs> amount of them. So, <laughs> so relitigating yeah. lockdown measures is not the thing to focus on. Like, what are you doing? What what are we doing? It's just like, even the statement yeah. in and of itself took two yeah. hard turns that should yeah. tell you. You know, it, the context clues within just her statement is like, okay, wait. <laughs> With, yeah, you're you're obfuscating within your own statement. Yeah, no, it's it's true, and and you know it's 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 painfully obvious. Even if you just look at the breakdown of the numbers, um, yeah. you know the 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 there is no kind of thing that there is no kind of segment of it that would be like oh this is obviously vaccines doing this and that's causing this huge amount of deaths no that's that's uh, that's very obviously not the case um the extrapolation is just it's it's this it's so ten it's several points that are increasingly tenuous Yes. It's just not. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um and and yeah, I I have many reasons to be angry with this uh with this doctor. Um yeah. all of that said, let's let's take a look at what that dickhead John Campbell has to say about it.
But anyway, we have this 8% deaths, uh, increased deaths in children. This is, this is a lot of deaths in children. She rightly wants to know the causes, because if we know the causes, we can prevent it. And the delay in reporting deaths, 392 days. You see, the whole point is we need to correct for things that are going wrong in lifetime, not over a year later. Something goes wrong today, we want to correct it tomorrow. Just think about things like the thalidomide uh, scandal in the past. You know, if we'd waited over a year, then there would have been another complete birth cohort of babies that would have been affected by that. We need this lifetime data, otherwise it becomes fairly, not meaningless, it's useful, but it, it's very much delayed. We can't correct for things that could be, could be going dramatically wrong now. Okay, so he's he's conflating two things in this clip, um, yeah. and it's painfully, painfully fucking obvious. The 392 days figure is the average time to investigate the deaths of these children, which I agree is insufficient, and perhaps Dr. Johnson, um, the, the lady who was talking, if her party actually funded public institutions, it might not take so long. Just a suggestion. Uh, but Campbell here is trying to say that, oh no, it's 392 days before the death of the child is reported, which is plainly fucking absurd but he's trying to make out oh no that's just that's just the norm and and we can't tell whether these vaccines are like you know causing the thalidomide like like the thalidomide scandal because the reporting just isn't quick enough it's 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 both stupid and insane but this boring old white british guy makes it sound like a reasonable position with his tone to an untrained ear and that's one of the many reasons i fucking hate the guy um, mm. what what are we doing? I don't know. What? Um, anti vaxxing We're anti vaxxing everywhere, yeah. baby. That's, yeah. that's what we're doing. It's just a nesting doll of what the f I don't. Yep. Dog. Yeah. yeah. Friend. All, all, all of his videos are like this, and they, 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 I'm so angry. Um, he will come back on Stay Free, and, and we'll, we'll probably tackle him properly at some point. Um, but uh, I mean, but just like boy. critically, like <sighs> look critically at your content and see supporting and like and and obfuscating on behalf of conservatives like who's who who's slowing down government processes i know who is here mm -hmm. i mean and and you know what everybody's at fault everybody's at fault but if you want government to move quickly this isn't the okay all right i feel like yeah. this is be, yeah. i mean we're in a I we're in a hole i don't I completely feels agree. like applying logic <laughs> is superfluous. Yeah. yeah, we uh we've got one final clip from John Campbell here where where he puts his editorial slant on things. Um, and she shares my exasperation with the COVID inquiry. Who says what to who? And you know, we're not interested in tittle tattle, as she rightly said, because we need to know what happened about lockdowns. What was the effect of them? Um, vaccines. Was it appropriate to give vaccines to children? You might not need to think too long about that one, especially after they'd had COVID themselves, especially when they've already got natural, active, acquired no, immunity no, as a result don't. of our wonderful immune system that can recognize 9 billion different foreign proteins. <sighs> so some pretty good questions there um, from, from uh, Dr. Johnson. So that's why I wanted to play that clip. Um, if 8% more children are dying around the world, to the extent we can extrapolate this, it's a pretty terrifying issue, to be quite honest, as you're a parent or a grandparent, um, you, you, you'll relate to that very strongly. More on this debate shortly, but I'm, I'm just going to get these out as I sort of think about them and have a look at them. So thank you for watching. Um. Yeah, we can't, in fact, extrapolate that child deaths are up 8% worldwide because they're not. Um, in fact, globally, they're decreasing every single year, which is what makes the UK such an obvious outlier in the statistics. Uh, but Campbell here, insisting it's the vaccine causing it, would then lead people to believe, oh, well, yeah, if they're giving the vaccine to kids everywhere, then it must be worldwide that this is happening. And no, it just isn't. Um, because the cause isn't vaccines. It's a creeping genocide by enforced poverty. That uh -huh. is the cause. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, as as you've picked up on, very obviously, if a natural immunity to COVID nineteen was sufficient, um, you know, which is, which is fucking not living, living uh, in the proof, swimming mm -hmm. in the proof over here. That's not yeah, and, how and... these viruses work, and we've known that from the jump. 
We've known that and can prove that. Um, yeah. And if that natural immunity to COVID-19 was sufficient, the COVID mortality rates wouldn't have dropped. As it is, according to a study by the BMJ, based on data across 2,558 counties in 48 US states, counties with a high vaccine coverage had a more than 80% reduction in death rates compared with largely unvaccinated uh -huh. counties. Uh -huh. Explain uh -huh. that one with your natural immunity, John Campbell, you prick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and measles Just, is fucking back. What yes, are yeah. we doing? Measles yeah. here is back in yeah, it's America. Not long, it's, 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 it's not long before we'll have to deal with typhus again, you Jesus know? Jesus fucking Christ, dude. <laughs> well, oh, I mean, dear. the MMR vaccine is like, typhus has nothing to do with the things that are standard, like standard yeah, vaccinations no, no. that kids get. You know what I mean? No, I know, I know. Like, I, I, you I was, know, like it just, it's, yeah. God damn. <laughs> I, uh, yep. I don't, I, mm, like the thing that I that you have to learn about whenever you learn about history stuff is smallpox, and mm -hmm. uh, it it's it is a boogeyman that is apparent um, if you learn anything about human history, and it's such a disservice that people aren't more aware of. Like, it, there's all these like tropes about you know, well you were you know middle ages fifteen because everybody died at thirty five, like averages and kind of like tropes and lore of history have really obfuscated the reality of like people having to make more kids because they die in horrendous ways that yeah. we have since repaired and yeah busting yeah. that dam back open is so fucking dangerous yeah, and it just they're, isn't they're, taken seriously by people that have way too much fucking child, sway. Children, children dying is what brings the average down. Um, that's that's why the average. Uh -huh. You know, it's it's that's, uh -huh. that's, that's yeah. That's yeah, a hundred percent. It's 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 all fucking playing with statistics. Yeah. All of this. Um, anyway, there is more of Russell's show. Uh, so specifically a twenty-six minute editorial. Um, and mm. and I. I uh huh. Mm. <laughs> and I, I will play you. I will play you the first clip here. There's been an unprecedented rise in the deaths of young people in the last few years. Also, mass censorship of outspoken critics of the pharmaceutical industry. I should know. I'm one of them. But is there any connection between these two things? Deaths of young people, mass censorship. Let's have a look. <laughs> We can create change together by opposing these forces of tyranny and deception that would have us believe that there are just unexplained, unexpected deaths just sort of happening. At least that's how Channel 4 report on the phenomena. As you know, Channel 4 were one of the main media outlets working together on the attacks against me. Well, it seems they're less intrepid when they're covering the important Marshall subject support, of the sudden rise of deaths in young people. We'll be showing a bit of that footage as well as further evidence that Moderna were surveilling, censoring, monitoring and controlling content I was making about Big Pharma. I'm not suggesting there's a connection between the legacy media and the Big Pharma, although their financial relationships might lead you to think that there definitely is. Let me know in the comments in the chat what you think about it. Let's have a look at how the legacy media want you to think how they present facts in a peculiar, obfuscating, distracting way. What's brilliant about this is if you look at the comments under this video, no one is buying it at all. Now, of course, this being about I the deaths of young why. people, it does center on actual human beings. And in some cases, they are young people that had underlying heart conditions. And it's possible, of course, that their deaths had nothing to do with events of the last couple of years. I'm certainly not in a position to declare that there definitely was. And I'm certainly too sensitive <laughs> to the family members left behind grieving. Unfortunately, <laughs> there'll be very many of them to suggest that anything other than what they feel about the death of their loved ones is the truth. Oh, boy. Hammer's uh, back. <laughs> Hammer's back. Hammer's back. <laughs> More baby. Um, wow! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Russell spends uh, 26 minutes insinuating that, to start, um, it's the vaccine causing young adults to die instead of long COVID, um, despite literally just saying, oh, well, I mean, some of these people may have had underlying health conditions or heart conditions. I mean, well, what do I know? I'm not saying anything definitive. Um, we then find that Lee Fang has released part two of his bullshit Moderna piece, and spoiler alert, it's idiotic, and Russell spends a good chunk of time whinging about how he's been targeted by the media without ever actually addressing the things that he very much did. Uh, yeah. Even saying Channel 4. Mm -hmm. Dude! Like, yeah. okay, <laughs> very clear what your motivation is. And again, yeah, using kids dying 
to accuse Channel 4 of misreporting allegations of okay, yes it's like, oh well they 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 looked into me a lot but they didn't look into this very well did they because they didn't cover that it's the vaccines doing it and it's okay. like well yeah but it's like mm, what mm. are we yeah but i was but yeah he's accusing like bias and negligence but uh-huh. then also immediately saying he's not saying that that happened, yes. what, at least twice, maybe three times? Yeah. It's like, yeah, well, with, I'm not with, saying this, but I am saying this exact very same thing. Yes, yeah, with the, with the with the financial ties thing as well. Yeah, no, ab- absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm not saying this, but also based on what I'm going to show you and, and what I'm going to say to you, you're probably going to come away with that conclusion. But also, I'm not saying this. <laughs> okay. That is such manipulative <laughs> bullshit. Uh-huh. I'm not saying yeah. this, but I am saying it. Like mm-hmm. then why 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 are you saying it at all then? Yeah. If you aren't gonna stand by what you say, like that's the thing. It's like, oh okay, at least he's also a fucking pussy about it. If you're gonna say it, say it. <laughs> good yeah, night. No, I, I, I don't. Excuse me. I don't. Good Knigget. Um. And I, I, yeah. I. I. Uh, I don't disagree. And, and so, uh, in the interest of finality, I'm gonna play one last clip. Um. From this show and from this editor, and it's it's the end of the editorial here. There you have it then. Excess deaths are on the rise across the world, with a recent report suggesting that 8% more children died last year than in previous years. What's been going on? Channel 4, a legacy media company, when they report on it, never inquire as to the potential for recent medical interventions to have at least contributed, or at least, you know, if you were following science, you'd follow it in that direction, wouldn't you? Seems they've got bigger fish to fry and other projects to pursue. Meanwhile, it's clear, plain and evident that Moderna are surveilling, spying on, deamplifying, shutting down and censoring dissenting voices. Why would that be? We all know why. Because the truth is antithetical to their ability to make profits. So the truth has to be recategorized as misinformation and misinformation has to be shut down. And across the world, there are censorship laws being passed by people that directly ask for my channel to be demonetized and shut down. Incidentally, all in all, what you have is a legacy media, a pharmaceutical industry and sets of nefarious and peculiar agencies that have a vested interest in shutting down true information by calling it lies. Meanwhile, the mainstream media are not investigating what's causing so many excess deaths among young healthy people and even children it's long covid and a creeping poverty-based genocide inflicted by a shamelessly evil government all right job done um i'm not sure well, what to do with the next 25 minutes and 55 seconds of my time really but but there we are can i also add the other yeah. thing that was being reported and explained by doctors as soon as we found out what covid was and that it was happening is that the additional pressure that COVID would put on the healthcare industry and on the systems in general would mm-hmm. have ripple effects. Yep. Not to say any of this claims about, oh, they said that the vaccine would be 100% effective, which they didn't, or that COVID was going to blah, 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 whatever. All the other lies and shit. The one that they completely ignore and just gets tossed out entirely and even people that are arguing in good faith somehow manage to fucking forget that there is a tinge on every single COVID conversation and health care conversation is that COVID puts pressure because COVID running rampant was going to put pressure on the healthcare system in general, that it would have ripple effects of a lack of health care and a lack of accessibility for other diseases and yep. injuries that have nothing to do with COVID. And yep. that's been getting explained and reported till they're blue in the face from the minute fucking one. It is so frustrating to me that, I mean, but <laughs> institutional yes, yes. problems, it, like the ripple effects of institu- like how many things have to go wrong in this country when people are like warning, like we will be paying for this, you know, like Supreme Court will be paying for this for the rest of our lives. This is a mm-hmm. 30 year problem, not a today problem. And then five years from now, people are like, oh, I don't know what happened. Yes, you do. And you were explained. You just weren't fucking paying attention. You didn't want to fucking mm-hmm. listen. Ooh, hammer. I'm, oh, I really, I hit myself. Yeah. I, 
I whacked my I, I whacked my headphones and I was like, I should probably put this down. <laughs> <laughs> She's here. We're here. Um, We're handling yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Ah! This this is this is, there's a, there's there's a lot to be angry about in this. Show. <laughs> Boy. And the income Boy. disparity was also a warning that was explained, like yes. the increasing divide in access to resources is going to make all these problems. I do yep. not want to watch your country become like mine. It's fucking heartbreaking. Oh, we, we've we've been there a while. Uh, Don't worry. In, in, in terms of- I um, promise in, you, in, <laughs> there's in, hideousness in, terms... in parts of this country that like, y'all, I don't want you to have to be there and deal with yeah, it. It's, I, it in, sucks. In, 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 in a way that's in, so like pervasive. There, there are there are a lot of there are a lot of um, things that we do have that you don't. That is for absolute sure. Um, but in terms of um, income equality, uh, in, income inequality, and um, kind of class warfare, um, we we've been there since since, since I don't know fucking when. Um, <laughs> it, it, and, and and yeah, I I, I feel you. I feel you. Well, I mean, um, even it's... just from my own experience and then also understanding what people have to do. Like, I, I just, I, I, I live in a cautionary tale. Yeah. And I think that there was at one time, I think there was maybe a reluctance to call it that. Mm -hmm. And, um, man, oh man, I, it's really frustrating to, that the, that the woman's statement that, um, it's just sticking with me. Like it's mm -hmm. really it's it's in my craw, as they say. It's very um it was like she was so close to being yeah. rational. She, she was she was doing quite well there for a minute. And then what? <laughs> like it just and, that and, yeah. and it's kids. These are babies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and just it's, being it's a heaped harder, on the pyre of fucking It's a harder conversation because capitalism. Of that. Um, but it fucking yeah. sucks, man. That's it, it fucking it fucking it really blows. Where where when I when I kind of realized that the 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 kind of primary thrust of this show was gonna be dealing with weaponizing the deaths of children, I was like, oh well. fuck. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not shocked, but you know, this this is literal fucking Alex Jones tactics. You know, they, they, it's it, you're not calling anything a false flag, but it's still like, here are some kids who died. How can I make money off that? Huh. Um, you know, and 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 that's the territory. That's the territory that we're looking at. Like, oh, this is this it's is bleak. Really, this is fucking bleak. I just, uh, I, I hate to feel like I feel like I live in a a petri dish of how to fuck with everybody else, and having mm. a, a transatlantic kind of you know like connection and podcast, and having you know we have listeners from uh, other countries. It's not just this kind of in theory. You know, yeah, no. Well, learning no, some no, statistics, no. it's like boots on the ground having to actually learn about it, yeah. and hear about it, and but I also feel like that. Okay, silver lining. Here we go. <laughs> 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 now I get to make a tenuous connection. Ha ha. Um, being lining. able to being able to have this kind of dialogue and comparison and understanding um, broadens, I think, especially as an American. Um, cause I've had to work very hard to broaden my horizons beyond my own country. And I think that having a dialogue that's opened up to more than just the American experience, especially because fucking Russell is not getting like Russell is again, very like British person, mm. but it's yeah, still it, yeah. targeting American yeah, audiences. His, his content is still American. Yeah, yeah. Right. Or trying yeah, to be. And, and be. so having this kind of like awareness and kind of comparative discussion, I think, has brought, I don't know, brought into focus the responsibility that America has and does not own up to at all. At fucking mm -hmm. all. Yeah, no, I, I I very much agree. I very much agree. Um, you know, and I'm I'm not gonna say, you know, as America goes, so does the world. But in, mm. in a lot of cases, it does kind of come at least halfway close to that in in various different ways, um, you know. And I, I, I uh, yeah, 
I, I think um, the populism discussion is is where a lot of that comes in. Um, you know, from 2015, 16, you know, Trump and that kind of thing onwards. The influence totally. that has had on the global stage has, has been horrifying. And I, th I think um, I, I think the kind of the measure of American influence um, does kind of uh, appear around foreign elections, which is why this is going to be a really interesting year. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a Ooh. big one. It's a, I I knew it was going to be a year of change, and then and then you know I, it was again when I was looking at the WEF and all and all of that stuff. And mm. I was like, oh, they're they're covering elections, and like, holy shit, there's okay. a lot of elections happening this year. Most of the world, <laughs> um, well, That's half, really scary. half, yeah, well, right. But I mean, it's not just yeah. America, obviously. But mm. there is this kind of okay, well, we can look at the Americans that are excited about, okay, so uh, also America is trying, or like conservative America is triangulating with Bolsonaro and Viktor Orban. And like, they're, they're, it's not just America, but no. we can look at the engines of this like kind of populist xenophobic rhetoric that we mm -hmm. can all agree. Well, not we all, we can, I'm not going to say all, we can agree Wow, that's mm. a fucking problem. Wow, we don't need engines fueling this fire. We don't we mm -hmm. don't need furnaces, you know, like we're not heaping coal into these furnaces of of like really hideous um just like social tragedy. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. I, I, I would say if someone's made it this far in the show, they probably agree with us <laughs> on this point. <laughs> just, just just saying. If I tell you what, if you've made it to like two and a half hours or however long we're going, and 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 you still disagree with us, well done for making it through. Props to you. If you if you've made and it, this everybody, far and everybody, I'm sorry. Oof, yeah. <laughs> so sorry. I know I'm being a massive bummer today. Um, no, no, no. Well, well. Here's the thing. This is how the show went. This was very much the experience of the show. I was yeah. like, oh, this is very lighthearted. This is very, you know, DeSantis and Trump and like Biden. A couple of interesting things to talk about here, but mostly kind of fluffy bullshit. Okay, kind of fun. And then this happened. Was, oh fuck. It's making me look forward to my CAA corruption book. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's. Uh, Thanks, Russell. Um, all right. Well, uh, if you want to support us in what we do, um, head to patreon.com slash onbrand. Uh, if you want to drop us an email, get in touch. Um, it's theonbrandpod at gmail.com. Um, we, we have a Facebook group. It's On Brand Awakening Wonders. Come and say hi to some lovely people there. There are also some lovely people over in the subreddit, which is uh, r slash onbrand underscore pod. Wonderful humans over there. Um, socials. Uh, we are the On Brand pod in most places except for where we're not um and personal look for socials, the blue logo look for the logo um everybody should buy a magnet don't know if oh. you've got one to hand at the moment lauren but uh we sell gold we sell gold it's on a magnet it looks dope um lauren makes them with the paws um and these uh, right here right here mm -hmm. oh and actually i do have a bit of a plurg um while we're Ooh. talking about magnets i can even oh i can grab some that don't have grass on them yet I have been nice. adding um, actual other magnets to my store. Yeah. I'm not going to show. I grab ones that aren't going to be on the store. So that was a step, <laughs> but they exist. Uh, they I, exist. I can attest that they exist. Um, but yeah, so I have been adding stuff. If you want to not necessarily pay hey. shipping for one thing, you can throw a couple in there and absolutely make click it the worth link your in while. the description. Look at yeah. the magnet and then go elsewhere in the shop and look at all the other cool stuff that Lauren There should that be links. That yeah, take yeah, every yeah. take you everywhere. It's not that hard to yeah, figure yeah. out. Yeah, but yeah. There's it's, there's it's, actually it's... some stuff there to take a look at, which there haven't it hasn't been that way for like through Christmas and stuff because it was just go messy. do it. Go take a go take a look. Um, and our personal socials. I'm at Alworth Official, and Lauren is at made dot by dot Lauren dot B. That's me. That is you. Um, okay. Uh, patrons, we'll see you for off brand, and uh, the rest of you, we'll see you next week. But maybe go take a look at off brand because we do some cool stuff there. Um, and uh, yeah, we love you very much. Thank you for sticking with us. And um, bye. Bye. bye.